Welcome to Three Skulls Tavern, a channel devoted to tabletop role-playing games by Free League Publishing. This show is sponsored by Worldmill, online server hosting for the Foundry Virtual Tabletop. To support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash mattk. For a minimum of $2 per month, you get access to a ton of extra content. And unmute. There we go. <laughs> um, hello, and welcome to Three Skulls Tavern. Happy Halloween! Um, yeah, I always stream stuff on a Sunday, and Halloween this year just happens to fall on a Sunday, so perfect timing. Falls right in between our The One Ring campaign that we're running on the, ch on the channel. So I am going to be running a one-shot of the Year Zero Mini for you all to watch, and I'm kind of doing a playtest out of it as well. I'm going to be playtesting whether I can shoehorn in Alien's stress dice mechanic um, into Year Zero Mini. So I'll be talking a very, very quick little bit about what that, what exactly I've done there um, and what we're going to be playing. It's basically going to be a zombie, as you've probably seen from the, the description and the show art. Uh, we're going to be doing a zombie um, survival game in the mold of the walking dead and that just basically means i mean if you think about the zombie genre there are a lot of different tropes that can go into that you've got things like the girl with all the gifts you've got kingdom you've got um 28 days later which technically isn't a zombie movie um yeah there's just like a lot of different types you know whether the zombies are fast whether they're slow um whether they're kind of conscious conscious or not um and so, basically, trope-wise, I'm going with The Walking Dead, which is kind of pretty, pretty kind of traditional zombie stuff. Um, yeah. So, why don't I introduce the players we've got today and bring up our little, our little overlay here. So, we've got Marco and Ed joining. They're both uh, Patreon supporters of, um, for, my, for this channel. Hello, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. How you doing? Hello. And, yeah, I guess... This is going to be an interesting thing as well, because I'm going to be running a game for two players. Um, it's a horror game for two players. That that kind of brings up some interesting gaming themes. Um, a lot of people I know would never play with two players. They think that, you know, three is the bare minimum. I also tend to think that three is kind of the ideal number. But for horror, I think horror can work really well with one or two players. So I'm actually quite excited to be running it just for the two of you. Um, but we'll see where we get with that. So quickly talking about Year Zero Mini, if I um, show you this mirror board I've got here, um, I've kind of snipped out a lot of Year Zero Mini and stuck it in here. And this, all the stuff here that you can see is straight out of Year Zero Mini, nothing's changed. Uh, but I've added stress and panic and I've added a little infection mechanic here, which obviously is important if you get bitten or you get zombie fluids um, inside you somehow, then you potentially won't be turned to Ed thinking, no, hopefully not. <laughs> Where's that X card? <laughs> um, and basically, I'm trying to I'm trying to be as inobtrusive with um, with Year Zero Mini as I can be, while still making the necessary changes to make it fit within the zombie genre. So, what have I actually changed? Let's quickly walk through that. And to do that, I'll bring up the character sheet that I've kind of thrown together here in Google um, Sheets. Uh, if you look in the description below, you'll find a link to a, um, a link to a, oh my god, I just need to quickly move something out of there. <laughs> uh, one second. No, wait, hold on. This one. I apologize. <laughs> Everyone who can see it will lose access unless Adam is shared directly with them. Bugger. We'll have to leave it. Please do not go into the one that says... Even in the Hills playtest, because that's anyone who has it as the link will be able to edit it. Um, I'll have to change that pretty shortly. <laughs> uh, the one that says public sheet, please go, to, please go grab and look at this um, Haven in the Hills public sheet and, um, you know, play around with that one. <laughs> anyway, this is the, this is the one that you're not allowed to go look at, please. <laughs> um, but basically what we're looking at here is uh, you can see a lot of the stuff from Yerzu Mini is, is unchanged. We've got the name, we've got a concept. A look, but uh, conviction and impulse. I've basically just reskinned them a little bit, so conviction conviction becomes a creed, 
and uh, impulse becomes a quirk. And that does mean you can still do them like impulses, but you can also have the quirk be something that's a little bit more like what's a quirk of your personality. It doesn't have to be an impulse. Um, you can see that I've added a stress a stress thing down here as well. Assets are a kind of unchanged. Ammo gets added in. I've, I've kind of put these boxes in here for ammo. And then here's where the big changes start happening. I've changed the name of the attributes, which is one thing I always recommend doing when you're skinning um, your Zero Mini. So strength, agility, wits, and empathy become guts, speed, guile, and rapport. And then stress is kind of added on. It's not really an attribute, but it does come into play. Um, like you have to roll that many dice. So I've put it next to the attribute dice. So it's kind of obvious. Um, you'll also notice that normally there's like a blue bit here, um, for your kind of mental trauma that's gone away because basically stress takes over the mental trauma bit. Disorders are staying. If we get anybody who gets into that, it like gets far enough with, um, with being panicked, then they will potentially get a disorder. Uh, and then we'll see what happens there. And that's basically it. Luck points are gone. Luck points have been replaced, replaced with stress. That brings up a couple of um, issues. Again, why I'm playtesting. Where normally you kind of you kind of act according to these three traits here. And they can re they can gain... Um, you can gain luck points that way. By removing luck points, these just basically become role-playing um, prompts. And nothing more. So I'm hoping that's going to be okay. Anyway... That's basically it in a nutshell. Um, if you're not familiar with how the alien um, stress mechanics work, well, we're going to be walking through them. <laughs> uh, we're definitely going to be walking through them. And in a nutshell, you roll one one pile of dice for your for your dice as normal. But any t once you start, if you want to push your roll, you have to take a point of stress. And other things can add stress to you. Anytime some, you know, there's a stressful event, you add stress stress dice to your pool. And then, basically, the more stressed you become, the more the more likely it is that you're going to succeed. But there's also a flip side. There's also a chance that you'll panic. And the more stress you have accumulated, the more likely it is that you're going to panic. Um, it's a really nice mechanic. It really makes Alien an amazing game. And I think it will work really well for the zombie genre, which is why we've got it here. So, that's enough about Year Zero Mini. <laughs> um, let's talk about the game we're going to be playing. And as I've said, it's zombie. Um, it's going to be a zombie game. It's going to be based in um, like Walking Dead tropes. And I've picked a real life location in rural Kentucky. This is in the very south, kind of southern, southeastern part of Kentucky, around a place called Pineview, um, which is a kind of a tur touristy. Um, it's a very small town, also a county seat in Bell County, Kentucky. Um, and yeah, there's a, a kind of a largish town called Middlesbrough, like down to the south, about 12 miles or so, and about the same distance off to the northeast, or sorry, the northwest, is another largish town called Barberville. And just near Pineville, uh, Pineville is also known for this, this kind of um, thing called Chain Rock, which is basically a chain that's been attached to a rock. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a bit of a bizarre thing um, to me personally, but um, there you go. And like the, the lore around it is also a little bit bizarre. Like there's nothing really, some people just put a chain on a rock and that's basically, people go to see it. As far as I'm aware, let me know if you know anything about Chain Rock other than what Wikipedia tells me. Because um, I'm kind of curious as to why it's such a big uh, tourist attraction. Uh, but going away from Chain Rock, as you can see there is circled here, we've got Pine Mountain State Resort Park. Um, and this is where... You, this is where both uh, Marco and Ed have decided to have their their kind of settlement, their base of operations in the zombie apocalypse. So this is the location. This is the setting. We're not setting it back in time. This is basically contemporary. This is taking place. We can pretend that, um, I don't know, a zombie outbreak happens today. You know, it's it, anything that's that that is, um, you know, relevant today is relevant in this game. Um yeah. Anything else I need to say about this? Any questions about any of this? Nope. I guess the one thing to say is that um, when it takes place exactly is... I'm saying a few months after the outbreak happened, after it kind of spread like wildfire throughout the U.S. as well as the rest of the world. Um, so this isn't directly on the heels of the outbreak. It's been It's happened for a while. People have started... Like, the survivors have started banding together, finding settlements... 
Um, it's, you know, it's not like weeks after it's happened, it's, it's a few months after it's happened. So there are plenty of undead walking around. Um, there are still plenty of survivors out there as well. Um, but the balance is shifting in terms of numbers of survivors and numbers of undead as, you know, the zombie hordes are slowly <laughs> growing in numbers. Okay. Before I go any further now, before we start the game, the last thing to mention is I'm going to treat this a little bit like a convention game. Um, rather than doing a full-blown session zero for a campaign, um, the main thing I just really want to mention is safety tools, content warnings, things like that. Also for you, our viewers, um, really the only content warnings I feel I need to give are what you would expect on an episode of The Walking Dead. And it's probably not going to be as extreme as that. Uh, so you're coming here to watch a game about zombie apocalyptic horror. So you can expect gore. You can expect um, violence. You can expect uh, moral quandaries and hard decisions to make, etc., etc. Um, possibly other themes relating to that. I don't want to mention them too specifically because I might give away some um, spoilers for the uh, scenario or the adventure we're going to be running. Um, but yeah, basically, content warning-wise, that's 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 what we've got. Um, in terms of safety tools for Marco and Ed, we've had a chat about this before the session started anyway. We've had a chat about lines and veils. We've had a talk about X cards and the um, traffic light system where it's red, amber, green. Um, and yeah, basically, what I've suggested is that we do, if, if there's something that someone has a problem with, a line has been crossed or something like that, um, that that we will that one of you will get up, just stand up and walk away. I'll get the message, and when, when you come back, have a have a bit of a, a break from the game, and when you come back, we'll move on as if nothing had happened. We're all cool with that, yeah. Absolutely cool. All right. Okay. So, one thing we did at the very beginning of this, um, like prep for this. I asked some prompts from both of you about um, the settlement. So I asked I asked you both to come up with a list of NPCs um, and the pronouns. So you gave me all together. I got 20, 20 NPCs out of that. Um, I then asked both of you a few questions such as who's the ruler of the settlement? Um, who wants to overthrow the ruler and why? Um, who has you breaking rules? Why are you doing it for them? Things like that. Who's missing? Mm -hmm. Little prompts like this. Just like little ideas to see like what would come back. Is there something I can grab onto there? A little adventure seed that kind of you're helping me kind of populate the world with. You're having a hand in it. And then I can take it from there. So that's what we're running with. Um, and if I go up to the top, you can see up here in Miro. Um, <laughs> I've got... Uh, the, the 20 NPCs that you've um, identified are in this kind of brown dice tray, kind of yep. I, I, is the idea I had here. Um, I don't know why I have all tokens. I've decided to go Theater of the Mind, so we're not going to hopefully need these 20 zombie tokens. Um, got a bunch of images of rando randoms as well, randos. Uh, but really, you, the three kind of questions I prompted you with to come back with are up here at the top. So we got the ruler, yep. the ruler is Wallace. Um, Etc. We'll talk about that in a minute if we need to talk about it. The real big thing that we want to really talk around is the missing person, Tom, because that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Yep. Okay. Um, and we're starting with the two of you along with Boyd. Boyd is this mm -hmm. chap here, Boyd Simpson. Yep. And he is, he's come along with you to look for Tom, who's gone missing. And Tom went missing while he was doing a supply run with Boyd at the Middlesbro um, Mall, which is about 12-ish miles uh, to the south of Pineville. And as I said before, Middlesbro is quite a big town, and especially if you consider like the wider area around it. Um, we're talking sort of 40 to 50,000 um, residents in the wider area, so really quite big. Um, as far as like rural Kentucky is concerned. And as a result, 
you have tended to avoid it. Everyone in the settlement that you're at has tended to avoid has tended to avoid it. And in fact, we can even say that Wallace, the ruler, had made it had made it like a, a a ruling that only in special occasions should anyone go to Middlesbrough because there's just too many zombies there. There's potential for other, um, uh, you know, other survivors who yep. might might or may not be, um, you know, uh, friendly. And so. You generally have avoided it, but the mall is a very, very tempting target because the mall is is on the road that comes down from Pineville South to Middlesbrough. It's one of the first things you hit when you hit the town. Directly off that main road is the mall. Um, it's right on the edge of this of uh, edge of the town on the Pineview side. So it's never been you've never attempted it before, but. We can say that Boyd and Tom decided they were off. If we look back at the map here, they were meant to do a supply run in East Pineview, right? Mm -hmm. And decided that, you know what? We've done, we've, we've gone through East Pineview enough times. Let's go, let's go just check out the mall. Let's just, let's just see what it's like. Like we might be able to find something there. And so that's what they did. This was a few days ago now. Um, we could say two days ago, actually. Um, Went in, um, scouted it out. It didn't look like it was too dangerous. It looked like something that the, the two of them could handle. So they went in. And while they were in the mall, just as they started looking, they quickly became overcome by by zombies. And they ended up running, running away. Um, Boyd ran north out of the mall through the Roses um, entrance, while um, Tom was forced to run out of a, a kind of a small side exit to the west of the building and they'd agreed before they went in they they came up with a um a location to go to in case they got separated um you know to to kind of go back off to the north and go to a hardy's um fast food restaurant uh that was just a little bit uh, like just on the outskirts of the mall and a little bit to the northern side and boyd made it to the hardy's and he waited and he waited and tom never showed up the one thing he did say, though, is that after waiting for a short period of time, he heard some cars, some cars driving in the distance somewhere. And he couldn't really say exactly where they were because he was um, he was kind of like, you know, scouting for zombies and things. He didn't really see which direction they'd gone. Um, but Tom never Tom never came back. He then made it back. And it's been two days because um, Wallace was not happy when he found out where where um, they'd gone. And Tom has a brother called Vic. Tom has a sibling called Vic, and they really are very, very anxious about the about their brother Tom, and basically has been begging for for Boyd and for the two of you to go and look for his look for his brother look for their brother. Mm -hmm. Sorry, um, and that's basically where we are. You've gone back with Boyd in a car to the outskirts of Middlesbrough. Mm -hmm. We can say you've driven to the Hardee's, which is on the outskirts outside of the mall. The mall basically there's a, a very a very big road. The mall is on the right hand side as you're as you're kind of looking to the south. With a big car a big car park there as well. And the Hardee's is on the left hand side of the big junction there where like the mall sits in the corner of. So on the other side and you can kind of pull into the Hardee's and you can kind of get a nice view of the mall. And that's where, why don't you introduce then your two characters to the stream? Sure. Um, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Okay. Uh, you go first. Cool. Um, okay, I guess I, uh, I'll be playing Travis Parker, um, who's an ex-pro skater. Um, he's sort of probably in his late teens, early 20s. Um, he was uh, off doing competition when everything happened um, and he ended up trying to get back home. He is originally from California. Um, his plane got grounded nearby. Um, and I guess over the last couple of months, he sort of made his way to Pineview um, and then to um, the settlement uh, that's run by Wallace. Um, he's He's trying to get across to California, which is obviously a quite a way for him to go. Um, and he's um, realizing that he's, 
he needs more um, more equipment. He needs more um, people to help him do that. Uh, and so he's kind of he was planning on just kind of like getting as much as he could and leaving. Um, but unfortunately, he always feels like he needs to help those less fortunate. If he can kind of lend a hand, he will. Um, so he's kind of got embroiled in the settlement. Um, he doesn't really want to be there, but he's kind of like helping out. Um, and he, in the process of of doing that, um, he met uh, a girl there, um, and she was a fan of his. Um, they kind of hit it off. Um, then he realized he was making a mistake, but she's still around. Um, he's still trying to figure out what to do with her, um, where I met. Um, and I kind of hit it off, really, um, with Mason, who is Marco's character. Um, and between the two of us, we're kind of an unlikely kind of duo, um, but we seem to have kind of like got some kind of chemistry between us, um, which has kind of left us where we are, really. Cool. Um, that's uh, Travis. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So um, my character is Mason Scott. Uh, he's a former bartender, and he used to, lived in an apartment above the bar where he worked. Um, he was drowning in debt before the uh, zombie apocalypse struck, so it's kind of been a mixed blessing, you know? No more landlord hounding him for money, no more debt collectors hounding him for, for money. But um, but he lost his uh, ex-wife and daughter to the uh, in the early days of the pandemic. I mean, uh, pandemic. <laughs> in the early days of the, uh, of the apocalypse. Um, so he's kind of scarred and haunted by that. And he, he's been at this settlement with Wallace since the early days. Okay. Cool. Um, and you have, looking at your assets, you have a pet. I do, that's right. Uh, I have a German Shepherd named Whiskey. Cool. Um, I'm one of those people that usually forgets that pets are there. <laughs> but um, your your Whiskey is probably going to come into uh, to become quite an important character in this session since we're looking for someone, right? And right. we can actually, I think it's a given that you're probably on this mission to look for Tom because you have a dog. And you've probably been, you know, Vic probably gave you some of Tom's clothes so that Whiskey could smell them and get the scent. Um, mm -hmm. Even if even if um, Whiskey isn't trained in, you know, um, tracking things, still a dog and they still can, you know, potentially help here. Um, cool. Awesome. And weapons weapons wise, you're you're you've got a shotgun. And Travis is carrying... Oh, and a, a crowbar technically could be used, I guess, as a blunt instrument, of course. And Travis has a machete. I picked up a machete along the way somewhere along the line. And a skateboard. <laughs> I'm not going to ruin my uh, uh, $250 skateboard. If it means... <laughs> this, is, this is the kind of moral dilemmas I might be putting you up with. <laughs> crazy <laughs> you know it's not worth anything now right i'll tell you what when i get on that skateboard and i'm getting away from the zombies we'll see <laughs> <laughs> okay and boyd's um we'll say that boyd is armed with um oh what does any, boyd do for any living? ideas he's an ex-zookeeper oh, okay an ex-zookeeper um, so he's probably got some sort rifle? of like um yeah, we'll say that he's got like a hunting rifle. So like a bolt action kind of thing. Um, and that he also has some sort of a um, big stick kind of thing. Because he's quite comfortable. Obviously, you don't always want to have something that's loud when right. we're dealing with zombies, right? right? So most people are going to have a melee weapon anyway, whether it's a, a simple knife or something a bit more exotic. So I think for him... Um, for Boyd actually being an ex-zookeeper, it makes sense that he's used to, like, keeping dangerous animals at arm's reach and kind of, like, you know, having the big sticks with the lasso on the end and that sort of thing. Um, so maybe he's he's managed to get himself some sort of, like... We'll say he's got a lacrosse stick, actually. Yeah? That's cool. Because cool. that's kind of longish, and I guess you could kind of find them relatively easily. I think. Okay, so you're scoping out. You're scoping out this um, 
I, this thing, like, I want to put something on the map here, but there's nothing applicable to put on the map. <laughs> um, apologies about this. I spent a lot of time on this map, and then it turns out when I started doing the prep, it was like, oh, actually, I think we're probably going to spend most of our time down here in Middlesbrough. Um, anyway, so you're you're in this Hardee's, and you're kind of keeping an eye on it. We're going to say that you left um, in the morning, so that mm -hmm. you're, it's not dark. And you've got time to look around. You know, dark with zombies is not a good idea. No. Um, the car you've driven is an E car, an electric car, a Nissan, a Nissan Leaf. Um, mm -hmm. There's um, at the at the resort. There is like where you've got your base. There's some solar panels. And there's like a um, um, a charging point for electric electric cars. This actually means cool. that um, it's been quite handy. That's actually one of the reasons why you decided to put your settlement there. Um, because it's a lot, it's more convenient to be able to have a car that you can drive around that doesn't need very much fuel, um, mm -hmm. and that has a place where there are, is actually solar paneling that can um, keep the keep it topped up. Nice. Um, so you've um, there. We'll say there's like a couple of cars that that that, that um, are there, and you've got one of the two here with you. So you've managed to kind of drive fairly quietly um, down to Middlesbrough. It's only taking you about half an hour. The roads aren't as clear as they would be normally. Um, you know, there's some things to avoid and some, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there you are. So what do you want to do? What do you want to, um, Boyd's just kind of, um, I, I tend to play NPCs generally in these sorts of situations where they're on the sidelines. I would like, you know, it's up to you to kind of decide what to do. So what's the plan, Mason? Hell if I know, Travis. Uh, we're going to get the dog to sniff the stuff, right? And then go wherever it goes? How yes. does that even work? Oh, he picks up the kid's scent. Cool. Cool. Haven't you seen any movies? Uh, yeah, yeah. I remember there was this really old one with um, Connor Reeves, I think. <clears throat> You know, the dude from uh, that old film, The Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> You're making me feel old, kid. Mm. Good film. So, uh, Boyd said he heard cars go by, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. Didn't, but you didn't see them. I How far away did you? I didn't see anything, though. Nope. They're off, mm. um, I think they're coming off from that direction over there. Points off to his, his right, so... You're you're kind of um, facing south west towards the mall, and he's kind of pointing due west from where you are. And there's a road that kind of there's a road you're at a junction. There's a road that goes past the mall to the west. Um, yeah, it's a little bit blocked on this side. There's some there's some cars in the road. Um, a tree's fallen over, and it's like not really you can't really see very far down that road from where you are right now. Do we reckon he got out of the mall? Well, I hope so. He either got he either got it, or somebody maybe picked him up. I guess that's what we're here to find out, right? Hmm. We'll see if. Uh, good thing Vic ain't here, but I guess we're gonna see if we can find one of you know find Tom shambling along here, or his body. And if we don't, hmm. then I guess that's kind of good news so mm, why don't do we, we check out hardy's maybe he showed up after boyd left and maybe there's he might be in there yeah there's a note or something maybe he left some kind of uh, sign so let's check hardy's out first before we all right yeah we're here now mm-hmm boyd kind of walks like walks up to the door and kind of goes in um, following in. you've been it seems like he's been here before he seems pretty confident mm -hmm. right and right. you do remember that he, this is the place he was holed up um and as you enter there there's no there's no telltale like sounds or signs of mm -hmm. of any undead being here and again you've been pretty quiet get arriving um and there are you ha you've seen some kind of near the mall in the car park kind of shuffling around but only a few of them um which is also a bit unusual uh, usually in a big, big open space like that, you would you'd expect to see more. 
more zombies. But they're only a handful. So, so uh, yeah. oh, sorry. Go on. Um, Mason will uh, give Whiskey the clothing from Tom to get Tom's scent. See if mm -hmm. you can pick up, see if the dog can pick up Tom's scent inside uh, parties anywhere. Yeah, okay. So you do that. While you're doing that, what's Travis doing? Um, I'll be waiting by the door. Um, and then I kind of get bored waiting by the door. So I start looking over some of the shelves, realize there's, it's been picked clean probably. Um, I'll pick up the, the odd random can or something and looking at hope, being very hopeful, but then putting it back. A can? This is a fast, oh, food, oh. fast food restaurant. Yeah, it's what they probably put like <laughs> some tomato sauce in or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So you have a little. You kind of kind of have a little nose around. Um, whiskey, kind of sniffs around a little bit, but doesn't seem to be getting excited about any any smells. Other than there's a kind of a lingering smell of sort of, um, you know, fat in the air. You know, that kind of like, you know, I want to say chip fat, but I'm in the wrong country here. Um, yeah. The smell of fries, yeah. frying, um, that just kind of lingers and sticks to everything. Um, and an underlying kind of hamburgery sort of smell. And you wonder if, like, Whiskey, Whiskey seems a little bit more excited when he's sniffing around than he than he normally is out in... I mean, he gets excited, I guess, when he smells squirrels and chipmunks and things. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, he doesn't seem to get super excited like, he, like, he's found, like he's found the scent you're after, though, is kind of what I'm getting at. Um, okay. Keeps wanting to go into the kitchen, the kind of the back, the back part of the restaurant. So yeah, but Boyd is there also looking around. He's looking to see if any notes have been left, anything like that. Can't find anything. You go back into the back to have a little rummage. Mm -hmm. um, Boyd already had been here waiting and had basically picked a place clean of anything that was would have been left there a couple of days ago. And there's nothing. There's nothing to get. Um. And the kitchen is empty as well. Kitchen's empty as pick? well. Yeah, pick kitchen, like pick okay. clean. Yeah, yep. I guess you pick get some, some oil if you mm. wanted. Yeah, <laughs> you reckon we go to the exit that Tom came out of? Maybe uh, whiskey could pick up the, the 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 scent there at the mall. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. That's good thinking, Travis. I have the occasional good thought. <laughs> <laughs> you do all right. So is is uh, is the mall in? Should we get in the car, or is it is it in walking distance? Like definitely, the... definitely walking distance. Okay. Um, yeah, like God, I don't know feet. I'll do yards. Um, <laughs> probably, I don't know, like 300, 400 yards away. Hmm. Yeah, we, yeah. So but you're basically on one. If you think of it like this, you leave the Hardies. It's got like a drive through and everything. If you walk onto the road that the Hardys is on, cross the road, mm -hmm. you're instantly in the car park for the mall. Okay. But the very north part of the mall, in fact, the very north part of the mall is a Walgreens. Is a, not a Walgreens. It's a Walmart, a Super mm -hmm. Walmart. Um, oh yeah, so it's actually a little bit further along. So that Super Walmart is kind of in the same kind of complex, but it's separated from the mall. You have to go down mm -hmm. a little bit further, and that's where the mall is. So you would have to. Uh, sorry, it would be th about three hundred yards to the to this to the Super Walmart, and then probably another three hundred yards or so to the. Um, um, well, to we the could drive itself. into the drive into the um, car park. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. If I'm not if I'm not on the road, I don't want to have to run six hundred yards to get away from whatever I'm doing to get <laughs> in the car. Right. <laughs> okay. Cool. So yeah, you drive. You hop back in the car. Um, and you drive down the very short distance, only like a minute or two, to the car park. Um, and as you're driving, the movement does get noticed by some of the, the small number of zombies that are kind of out in the, mm -hmm. like around the car park. There's one shambling in the road as well. And they notice yep. the movement and they start, they start kind of walking towards your car. Yeah. Let's be quick about this. So um, we'll jump out 
and let whiskey do whiskey's thing and and uh you know stand ready for these zombies that are approaching Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say there's, I said about um, a handful, about a half dozen. So mm -hmm. um, why don't, why don't we, why don't each of you roll a D6 and we'll mm -hmm. go with the highest number. Four. One. <laughs> so there are four zombies heading towards you. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we may as well give the rules a little spin here. Um, Great. <laughs> I'm going to go up to the stress and panic rules because um, one of the things is, one of the triggers for stress is that you're being attacked, right? Um, or you encounter the undead without a barrier between you and them. That's bound to increase your stress levels because here they come. I don't mm -hmm. have a wall separating me from them yeah. um, or a car door or anything like that. You're out in the open. Yeah. So you're each going to be taking one, one stress now straight away because okay. of that. Um, cool. Whiskey's starting to growl as he sees them approaching. Um, and yeah, I mean, you said, let him do his thing. What's, what's his thing exactly? You're going to like, let him off his, if you got him on a leash, I guess is the first question. Uh, no, no, I don't, I don't have one. Okay, but he's like you've got him trained to to like obey commands, etc. Not attack yes. zombies. <laughs> um, yep. So he's probably waiting for you to give him the command to attack. Uh, Boyd has um, he's left his his rifle on his um, like slung over his shoulder, and he's got the lacrosse stick ready to go as well. So if we get the if we get um, whiskey trying to pick up the scent. And then try and just. Oh, sorry. Them. Whiskey to pick up the scent. You're going to. I thought. Oh, sorry. Whiskey do his thing. I thought meant like attack the zombies. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> no. All right. All good. All good. Okay. So you're still taking the one stress because you've got some zombies who are kind of yep. are aware We're of you. They're coming, and... coming right. after you. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. You want to head in then. Okay. So you, you pulled up to the northern, like the same entrance that Boyd left, right? The north entrance? Mm -hmm. Uh, No. To the where we think the... Tom came out of. Ah, right. right. Apologies, yeah. So you're going to actually drive around, because you're on the eastern side of the mall, that's the way the road was. Mm -hmm. You kind of drive yep. through the car park, and you go around. And again, we'll say those four zombies are kind of coming behind the car. Um, as you Fine. turn around the northern edge of the mall, you ha you're forced to stop instantly. As you see ahead of you, a lot of zombies. Shit. on this on this western side they're all kind of like standing there kind of you know shuffling around and as the car pulls around the corner they instantly their heads all snap to or towards the car and they start Fuck. making a beeline for you there are a few who are relatively close as well so um who's driving by the way it's a good question i can um, drive it's fine. okay yeah yep let the kid drive <laughs> so you've got zombies coming in from from behind you right and you've got zombies coming from in front of you oh, as well. Shit. Um, uh, yeah, I'll kind of like go to reverse a little bit, and then try to find a way. If, if I'm facing the big zomb, the, the big lot of zombies, I've got a few behind me. Kind of reverse a little bit, probably try and hang a left, go around some cars, and try and find a way out that way. I wasn't kind of expecting that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can you can definitely uh, out, you can definitely outrun them. Mm -hmm. because they're they're not moving particularly fast or anything like that yeah. um but what's like where where are you gonna be where are you gonna be driving to i guess exactly? the plan is to try and have, if i kind of drive so that i get far enough away that they'll lose interest it depends on whether or not our zombies lose interest or do they just go after whatever they see and they'll always track it and regardless they'll go in that direction or they just kind of see it see movement movement stops it's like, wait like i'm basically minutes, going with then... the walking dead style which is basically yeah. they will follow until they've they either they've... find something or they don't and then they're like then they just kind of stop yeah okay. right um all right in that case yeah we'll as, kind of drive so as you start driving away from them mm -hmm. boyd pipes up and says 
Why don't you drop us both off around the side of the other side of the building? You just drive, drive a little bit, and then get get them off our scent, and then you could then you double back and meet yeah, us yeah, up inside the mall. Yeah, okay, that makes sense, man. Yeah, okay, yeah. All right, you all right? You think you could do that, Travis? Yeah, 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 I'm right, fine. Let's go. He's got yeah, his hand like he's got his hand on the on the door on the handle for the door as well. Yeah, and as you kind of. As you do with uh, kind of as he's prompting, slow down. You go, that. you go past the, you kind of go past the north. You're kind of at the northern side of the mall, right? Mm-hmm. You're yep. driving back towards the east. I'm not sure if this is the opposite yep. direction with the camera. Um, yep. The way you came, and then you're just like turning because and because they'd fall. The the ones on that side had followed you up around the northern side. Mm-hmm. You can kind of quickly nip around the side of the building where they're yep. not going to see you, and you can't see any other any other zombies currently here on this side of the mall mm-hmm. so he goes then stop drop. go 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 it opens okay. opens the car door jumps out okay and uh, mason will jump out with uh whiskey as well yep. yeah okay you do that quickly like close the door not trying to be as quiet as you can with it and then travis peels off yep i'll drive off um to uh in between two or three other cars so i've got a way forward and back and then i'll kind of stop um, and then I'll kind of get out and try and make my way back around. So you're actually gonna avoid. you're gonna park in the park in the car park. Uh, yeah, because well, I guess they're gonna follow okay. the movement. But as soon as I park up, it's just gonna be another car, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So why don't we get um, from why don't we get from from uh, Mason a speed test to see how quickly you move. Um, okay. And are, whether you're able to get into this, like the eastern, the eastern entrance of the mall, before the other zombies come around the side. And I have three in speed, so that means I'm rolling three d6. Correct? So the way we the way we do this, yep. Yeah, um, you look at your character sheets. Speed yep. is three. If you have anything um, in your concept that can help here, I don't think you do really, or any any gear or assets that can help you. Um, again, I don't think for this particular role anything is going to be able to help you on this like whiskey's gonna be um probably in there before like well i mean he's not gonna be running ahead of you but he's gonna be he's not helping you move faster right 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 and the one point of stress does not mean i'm rolling a stress die no it does it absolutely does it does does. okay got it so you're rolling three normal dice and you're rolling one stress die and you need you need at least one six and you need to tell me if and the stress die if the stress dice comes up comes up a six that counts towards a success if the stress die is a one, you need to tell me that. <laughs> I got uh, nothing on the stress die. That's a two, and uh, okay. no successes. On so the other dice. you can push the roll. You take one additional stress to do that. So mm-hmm. and then you re-roll the re- re-roll your pool, including the second stress die. So you would roll ooh, two ooh, stress ooh, ooh. plus your three speed. It's so, a slippery slope, Marco. <laughs> it is a slippery slope. You're not, uh, and basically, what we're saying narratively here is you're not moving. The entrance is a little bit further than you thought it was. Yeah. Uh, there was like a side door, but you can see it's it's like barred barred shut. And it's just a little bit further on towards the main the main side entrance. So, okay. you're like the stress is building. Are you going to make it in yep. time? Right. Here we go. Failure. No, um, no ones on the stress. Side, okay. Though. Make sure to put two stress on your character sheet as well. There. Okay. All right. So you come round. You get to the door, and just as you're opening the door to go inside, you glance over your shoulder, and you can see that two zombies have come round the side, and are, are basically looking directly at you, kind of like approaching. Um, Travis, we can say. Um, I was going to, depending on how this roll went, we're going to see what happened there. But I think because mm-hmm. their attention has been drawn to the, you know, the the meal that is not, you know, encased in metal, um, <laughs> they're ignoring you. So you're able to actually park the car without them seeing. But okay, you can great. see welcome. that you can actually, welcome, you kind of, you pull the car in and you just like look over the, like look over the, the seat. And that's what you see. You see two oh, zombies coming shit. around the side, like looking directly at, at um, Mason and Boyd. As they're just like, oh shit, <laughs> going inside. Um, okay, well I get out. I get out of the car. Shut the door as, quick, as quietly yep. as I can, um, and I'll try while they're being distracted by Mason and Boyd. I'm going to try and run be- 
get behind them as quick as I can, but as quietly as I can, um, so that if they're going to go for Mason, I can kind of come up behind them with my machete and whack them if needed. Okay. The problem is, as I said before, there were a lot of zombies on the other side. And as you start <laughs> creeping forward, the two oh, slowly become four, then they become six, uh, and you just see more and more zombies coming around the corner, and they're following the two at the front. Fine, I'll get back in the car then. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> get back in the car. Um, um, I would rev it, but, you know, it's an electric car. Um, I, and, so, I think as soon as it moves, they're probably going to notice it. I'm going to move towards them. Yeah, to so get their attention. They've suddenly got my attention, um, which will allow Mason and Boyd to get into the door. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, they're through the door already. They've, they've, okay. gone, in, they've gone inside. So oh, this okay, is more cool. a case of, um, you know, that's where the zombies were heading. They were going to kind of head, head towards them. Cool. If so in that case, I'll still do the same sort of thing. Yeah. Because... Otherwise, they'll just stop by the door and wait by the door, and they've got no exit. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get. You know what? I'm gonna, and... I'm gonna. Let me just um, let me give you a little. I'm gonna share share a link with you very quickly, which is a map right, of the exact place we're looking at. So if you go over to Discord very quickly into our our, our super secret channel. <laughs> Here's the Google map. I'm actually gonna open on the stream here as well. Okay. So people watching can see what I'm talking about. Let's get rid of all this bump here. All right. So the Hardys, can you see the Hardys on the kind of right hand side? Okay. First of all, I guess can you see the Walmart and the yes. and the mall? I see Hardys. Yeah. If you look on the opposite side of the street to the right hand side, there's a like above the junction. Oh, so the Hardys I thought was where the Holiday Inn Express is, um, but it's not. It's on the other side of the road. Um, but that's where the Hardys is. You are currently um, like between the mall and El Mar um, Cracker Barrel. You see Cracker Barrel? Yep. The mall has like a has like a little black bit coming out of the right hand side of it. Yep. And you're kind of parked between that black bit and the Cracker Barrel, which is just next to it. Right, got it. Okay. Um, yep. And they're all coming around the the northern side of the car park. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, well, in that case, what I'll do is I will drive south. Okay. Um. So that they follow me yeah um and i'll happily do that um making sure i keep them busy um and i'll see if i can drive around the mall <laughs> to come back around um in which case i'll obviously be going slightly faster than them yeah um so they'll end up going all the way around the side and then i can kind of go around to where the door is and then park up and then get out and get in so there's a south entrance too, right? Yep. So you're going, you're driving south. You're going to get their attention. You're going to drive south. You just, just go over mm -hmm. this again. Exactly. Yep. Where are you, where are you parking? Where do you want to park? So I'm going to go south, um, past Belk, the yep. apartment store, go around Belk. But staying in the car park, right? Staying in the car right. park. Gotcha. Um, and then going up that side car park, the yeah. small one. Okay. All the way out past Middlesbrough Mall again, all the way out past the Golden Ticket, and then all the way back around to end up where I started. Right. Um, with with them to follow me. Right. Okay. So that I can then park up the car and then dash to get into the um thing. So in theory, I guess by the time I've parked up, they will probably be coming up around the Golden Ticket cinemas, or they would have got bored or whatever and just spit off. Yeah. Um, so it just takes a little bit of time to kind of go all the way around, um, distract them enough, and then get out and go and join gotcha. the rest of them. Yeah. So you're going to also not be driving too fast initially. You want them to no, all yeah. see you and all to be kind of coming to the south side of the, yeah. of the building. Gotcha. So, so I'll probably do that all the way until I get to just past Belt and I'm going north again up that side bit. Gotcha. So as they're coming okay. up the side bit, that's when I'll kind of like floor it or at least go a little bit faster uh, at a safe speed. Um, and then go around and then okay. come back down to a factory connection or yeah, wherever they are. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. They're gonna while you're doing that, I'm gonna shift back over to Mason and Boyd and Whiskey. Um, mm -hmm. you open the door to the Roses discount store and 
Um, Boyd instantly kind of looks, kind of grabs your shoulder and does this kind of gesture to you. And then he kind of ducks down really low. Um, and he, and he's kind of like grabbing his lacrosse stick. Clearly, clearly expecting there to be zombies inside. Um, the door to the roses, uh, was actually open. Um, this is where he actually exited previously. So, um, yeah, it may have been barred at one point, but it's actually kind of working now. Like you can open it and go inside, etc. Um, and this is a discount, like it's like a, um, a discount store and they sell everything in here. Um, and it was one of the first places that got, that probably got looted, um, because there's all sorts of like knickknacks that are, that could be useful around the house. Um, that don't necessarily aren't necessarily very big that could be quite useful um and people just kind of went to town and, and, and sh like in st uh, shops like this um so it's it looks like it's been completely ransacked you might still be, be able to find stuff in here um if you really spent the time to look but that's not what you're here to do right right so boyd boyd is kind of with you he's he's kind of um he kind of like um points ahead like let's go directly through the shop uh, to the like where you would expect to get into the mall if you enter through roses you if you just head straight away from the the one side you go straight through it to the uh, to, into the mall itself okay um and i'm gonna have my crowbar at the ready in, in, in case of uh of any unwanted company yeah. um and um if whiskey's got Whiskey's already got the scent from the clothes, then give Whiskey the command to like start sniffing around and uh, we'd start moving where Boyd tells us to move. Yeah. Um, Whiskey's kind of is kind of like moving his head from side to side like he's like he's sniffling around. Um, this is also I think we'll say this is also hmm, hold on. No, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that the way that Boyd and Tom came in initially was from the northern entrance, so through the cinema, um, came down, and then when they were in the in the kind of the heart of the mall itself is when they got separated and they they sp got split up. So um, there is no scent. Like whiskey isn't picking up a scent right now. You can tell by the way he's acting. Mm -hmm. um, then suddenly his hackles rise and he starts growling. Which he always does when there's when when he's like a, a threat. Normally zombies, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> as you've as you've learned over the last few months. Right. All right. So and I'm, you can I... you can hear as well now that you've stopped and he started growling. Um, you can hear some shuffling, like the, the, the telltale so the sound of shuffling. Uh, do I know? Does it? Do I know like? directionally where that sounds I'm, I'm imagining that there's like shelves with stuff on them and you're keeping your heads down and kind of like mm -hmm. just kind of going where you can see there's no one there you're just kind of like you know not really peeking too much um do you okay. want to have a little look up bearing in mind that uh whiskey has just growled it's just made an audible noise right so um maybe i'll i'll pet whiskey try to get whiskey to to quiet down um and if we're, we're, we're hunched down or behind these uh, shelves, maybe if get to the edge of the shelf and just kind of peek around the side. Yeah. To the um, left and right. Give me a guile roll, please, with add your stress to it as well. Okay. Guile, I'm I'm treating like um, stealth in certain, in, like this is you using like, <laughs> not being like walking quietly, but also but, like trying to peek like oh. surreptitiously. All right, so I have two ones on the stress. That's <laughs> you just as long as one is there, you've triggered panic. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and one success on the on the other dice. Okay. Um, and one success. That's fine. You you manage to like you can feel the panic starting to well up, but you keep your shit together as you peek around the side of this of the shelf. And you can see that there are there is um, there are two zombies kind of just ahead of you in that direction, off into mm -hmm. the store. Um, one is reasonably close to you and seems to be kind of like looking around a bit, like like it's heard something. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And the one behind it is just kind of more, it doesn't seem like it's, it's just kind of like swaying a bit, not really moving. Okay. Um, And how far apart are they? Oh, probably a hundred yards or so. The other one's not a hundred, maybe like 50 yards away or so. Like not too close. I but there could, the I mean, void. there could be more, there could be more in the store, of course. Uh, right, 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 right. <laughs> Wait, is there another way to get into the mall? So you're heading in a beeline for the, the entrance to the mall. You can, let's say you can even possibly see the entrance from where you are. Okay. Um, it's through the store though. And this is you getting to the edge of a shelf and looking to the left and seeing two zombies there. Right. So you can still just keep going straight. Like if you were to just run and ignore them, you would get into the mall proper. Um, okay. Yeah. And I think we'll say bec- there are actually like window, like skylights and stuff, even though there's no electricity um, that you can kind of, some of it, some of the mall itself, like inside the mall is lit up and you can see that um, there are definitely things moving around inside the mall. Shapes of people, at least, at least two or three. Really bad. Boyd, b- before you do anything, Boyd kind of tugs on your sleeve mm-hmm. and gets really close, gets really close to your ear and whispers, What do you think? Let's make a run for it into the mall. Ah, yeah. Well, shit, we do that, they're all going to come right on top of us. What? Oh. What's your plan? Why does everyone look to me for a goddamn plan? Oh. <laughs> well, look. <sighs> you haven't got anything. You haven't got anything sharp, have you? Well, I... There's two there, right? He kind of <laughs> He kind of puts his head up and looks around, and when he does that... Um, you hear a, as the one that was closer to you starts shuffling towards you directly. It's obviously seen him. He wasn't being too careful. Okay. Um, All right. All right. Look, that, that one there has seen me, but the other one didn't. All right. We take that one out real quiet, like, and then we don't need to run. Come on. Get back a bit. Get back a bit. Yep. Okay. I, I have my crowbar ready. All right. So you back up a bit. The zombie comes like around the front. And as soon as it sees you, it kind of like, it kind of lets out a much louder sound. It's just like, starts like almost falling towards you as, as they do. Um, yeah. What do you want to do? I'm going to, uh, well, I guess smash his brain. Hold, hold on a I second. Can. What's, what are you commanding whiskey to do here? Cause whiskey is probably wanting to go, you know, savage wolf on this thing. Right. Are you letting him? Uh, are you letting him do that? It'll probably be quite loud. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna command him to stay back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and, and then, then you're gonna uh, smash it. Smash its brains in with my uh, crowbar. All right, give so me. Cr- yeah. Crowbar gives me an extra die, so that's. Mm-hmm. Am I using guts for this? You are using guts for this. Guts is your like strength stat. Yep. Yep, and two dice for the stress, right? Two dice for the stress. So you're rolling four dice. One, three for guts. One for your crowbar. Yep. Yep. And then two for stress. Burger honey iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a success, but I also have a stress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. That's fine. Um, so people who are wondering, who are familiar with Alien, um, I've agreed with both Marco and Ed ahead of time that when they trigger panic, I will roll on the panic table for them and just narrate the result. Um, so normally, if you're playing Alien, the players can roll for their um, can roll for their panic. But I think with me keeping it a bit more narrative, it's going to hopefully keep the tension up a little bit because they don't know what I'm rolling. Um, so yeah, anyway. So... That's fine. You you got one success. Um, you swing your crowbar and you smash the you smash the side of the zombie's head in. Um, 
and it collapses to the floor. Um, yeah, I think we're, we won't worry about like splatter or anything like that for now. Um, it does make a bit of a sound, like because you're hitting it as hard as you can, yeah, and so. it's next to a shelf, and it like it like careens into the shelf as it kind of like collapses to the floor. Um, you definitely caved its head in, so it's it's not going to get up again. I was going to say it's dead, but it's already dead, of course. Um, <laughs> uh, but it makes a huge clatter as it like lands against mm. the shelves, and it like collapses to the floor. It pulls like some of the shelves down, and there's just this almighty clamor as things collapse. <clears throat> Boyd, you just hear Boyd behind you say, "Fuck," <laughs> and then we're gonna we're gonna go back to we're gonna go back to Travis. Um, Travis, you have driven around the side of you've done a little loop around the yep. side. You've made sure to go at you know just the right pace so that you're kind of like, you know, almost only only way this Come could on. be better is if Come you had like a little like a bit of like raw steak that you're dragging behind yeah. you, um, and they are they are falling for it. Yep. When you turn around the kind of the left, the sorry, the the southern bend of the of the mall, do you, you then start accelerating a bit more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I start so you want to cut, you want to try and leave them there at the southern point, right? That's yeah. The idea. Well, 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 the southern point as I turn to go north. Yeah. Because then they're in that long kind of thing, and I've I've handy had a quick look on Google Maps. Yeah, yeah. Um, and seen that it's sort of like a, a long sort of like tunnel, basically, fence on one yeah. side, mall on the other. Yeah. And then kind of leave them to wander around there and then I can kind of go around the front sure. again. So you kind of want them, you're, right, you're hoping that they're going to be congregating around or loitering around uh, the sort of bottom yeah, left yeah. bit of Belk kind of in that yeah. bit of the car park. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, that's fine. I think um, I don't, I don't think any role really is needed here. Um, I'm not going crazy. I'm not. Like... Yeah. This doesn't sound like it's, it's a really like down to the wire or anything like that. It's a good plan. Um, the problem is as soon as you turn the corner, um, uh, of Belk and you're along the, that Western side, yep. um, previously you were at the Northern end edge of this side of the building, right? Uh, by the cinema, you turned the corner of the cinema yeah. and you'd seen a bunch of zombies there. Yep. Um, you couldn't see all the way down cause there's a line of trees there. There mm -hmm. are a bunch of zombies here too, <laughs> Shit. right in front of you. And why by a bunch, I'm, I mean, probably like Fuck. between... Just at a quick glance, there's more than ten, maybe yeah. twenty or so. Okay, I'll, I'll try and see if I can get around them. Okay, okay, you're gonna drive through them, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll try and like avoid them. <laughs> I'm not gonna try and hit them. All right, we're definitely. Them. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be kind of hard because they're kind of like looking. They see the car move yeah, yeah. as you kind of turn the corner. And they start kind of like approaching Shit. the car. And because it's quite narrow, there are cars, like abandoned cars in here as yep. well. Um, you're going to have to definitely run over some of them. There's no way you're not going to be, you're going to be able to drive past them without hitting I'm, some. I'm not going to hit them like, like super fast. I'm going to try and nudge them rather than hit them rather than damage the car. You know, you kind of like spin them or something like that rather than just crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I mean, what do you mean? Like, if there's one directly in front of the car, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> you're gonna just um, kind of like go it fast enough that you're knocking them, you're knocking them over. Yes, and then you're than... gonna keep driving over the top of them. Uh, yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, or kind of like, <laughs> okay. Or, I mean, I, so when, when you when you hit them, they'll kind of like probably go swear, onto the bonnet and then go back down a, on the floor. A, a Nissan Leaf looks like again. Yeah, I, 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 I've driven it's one. It's not got a very deep undercarriage. It's, uh, no, but it does have a very nice <laughs> sloping um, uh -huh. thing to it. So, you know, um, they're very quiet. I think Definitely you're probably it. going to be getting some... Um... Hence the not driving really fast because they're made of plastic. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You do that. You start doing that. You kind of bump into the first the first zombie that's... Well, say you drive past one or two first that are kind of like, yep. uh, like to the sides or something. Yep. Um, and when you, <laughs> you kind of gently knock over the first one and then <coughs> pick up the speed ever so slightly to drive over it mm -hmm. um you feel resist you feel resistance with the yeah. car and Dragging you're kind it. of looking and you're you're kind of glancing in your rear view mirror as you're coming up to the second zombie who's also blocking your way and you don't see it like behind you on the floor i'll move the wheels backwards and forwards so i can kind of like shake whatever's underneath me there's an arm or a leg or whatever there's 
Yeah, you're doing that as you come to the second as you come to the second yeah. zombie. You hit that one, it kind of disappears under the car. We'll say this one. Uh, give me a give me a d6 roll actually. We're going to sure. do some we're going to do some luck die rolls here. 6. <clears throat> oh, that's good. <laughs> Uh, this one you manage because you're swerving a bit you get the second one and it kind of goes under one of the tires and you kind of like drive over it um, and you see that one behind but the Shit. other one seems to be stuck fuck, fuck, fuck. stuck under the car um, and as you come to the third one it's actually the third and the fourth in quick it's quick su succession and one at least one of them also gets stuck and the car is now slowing is, noticeably uh, is there, is there a curb i can get onto um there there isn't it doesn't look like there's a curb does there mm. um yeah, yeah there'll be a curb like before it hits the grass it looks like it just goes up to the grass kind of like there might be a curb there yeah a, a little bit of a curb there um before going onto the grass and there will there like there are some cars here but it's not super full of cars right now yeah so, so you can't find just... a spot where you can kind of pull over but so there the you're now is... slowly yeah. getting surrounded too shit 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 um so yeah so my, my plan would be to go up onto the curb which means i raise my car a little bit whatever's stuck under there will get caught on the side of the curb i can then come back off of the curb and then carry on that is my plan whether that works or not i don't know <laughs> Okay. Um, hmm. This is interesting. So I think we're going to treat this like a climactic scene a little bit. Um, okay. And the idea is that you basically... Um, normally we do this with everyone together, but the the idea behind it is I'm going to set a difficulty here, which is the number of, the number of successes you need to pull this off. Right. Um, and I'm going to go with... You need two successes to pull this off. Um, right. But I need to know exactly. It's, just, it's not really a climatic scene. This is more like a special trait, like for an obstacle. Mm -hmm. um, and the obstacle is basically, is basically like, um, yeah, zombie obstacles, <laughs> physical yeah. obstacles. Um, <laughs> so to get to get rid of the two that are currently under you, to get past the ones that are in front of you, we're gonna do this with a single yep. roll. Um, yep. What are we gonna roll for this? I guess is the question. Um. I reckon it's probably going to be guile. I would imagine, if that's like a an intellectual kind of way of doing it. I mean, yeah, it is. I, really I, could, blag, guile, yeah. I could blag speed because it's like one of my my highest stats. So I think it's probably going to be guile. Yeah, I think I think we're going to give you one extra point of stress as well for free. <laughs> Thanks. I'm on two now. Um, Hooray. Just it because is quite a this situation. is pretty, like you're getting surrounded and you're by yourself, um, so we're, I'm going to add one to the kitty there. So yeah, I think I think that makes sense. Why don't you roll, roll guile with your two two stress? We'll say you get sure just to just to throw you a bone. Uh, yeah. You get a gear dive for the uh, I'll take it right for the can. car. <laughs> Jesus. Okay then. Um, and as, as Fenhorn right. says in the chat, modern cars aren't so great at killing zombies. Only made of plastics and shit. Um, yeah, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, let's see what happens. Okay, that's cool. So I got two successes. Oh, you did? Did you trigger and any I stress? Got... Yes, I did. I got one. Okay. One. You're fine. You keep your shit together, and it you pull it off. You. You like drive up to the curb, you go bum 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 over it. The car obviously kind of hops over it, and it manages to it manages to lose your two your two passengers you see now in the rear view. Um, and in fact, you leave the car um, a bit like straddling the grass. You yeah. At at one point, you can hear something scratching on the undercarriage, um, but you manage to get past the bulk of the zombies with a burst of speed. Before you yep. pull back into the into the car park, and you're through them. Cool. In which case, I'll go and park up as quick as I can. Um, you want to still do the original plan? Start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go back around, <clears throat> and then park up, and then dash from the car as quick as I can across into the into the mall. Okay, in the same entrance that Mason went into, Mason yeah. Boyd. Okay. You do that, and you don't come across um, any other any other zombies they basically you've you've kind of successfully funneled them away um cool. you can see though as you're coming back around the northern side um there are one or two stragglers who yeah. might be able to see the car so you're probably gonna have to park a little bit further than you originally wanted 
Okay. Um, but yeah, if you were to drive originally where you wanted to do, right next to the entrance where you'd originally parked, you'd probably be getting quite close to them. They might notice you. you right, might okay, quiet that's car. fine. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay. Back into the mall. <laughs> uh, we are screwed. You've just rung the door at the dinner bell, effectively, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what's What's the plan? Boyd's um, so, not been much help. Right. Um, can, can, do I have a sense of like how many zombies we've attracted to our attend, to our location? Um, well, you definitely can hear movement inside the store that you're in right now. Um, the store, the doors going into the mall are glass doors that are closed, and mm-hmm. you don't immediately like as you're kind of like oh shit, you're kind of looking at, like thinking like oh, oh what what's seen us. When I said you could see a few bodies in the mall shuffling around, um, they don't seem to be moving towards you. Okay. And it's only a few inside those, beyond those glass doors, you won't, right? That you can see. but it's That we can see. It right. opens up into like a courtyard kind of area in mm-hmm. the center of the mm-hmm. mall. Um, and you would imagine that there's like, you can't see, I mean, it's very narrow, narrow cone of view that you can see straight ahead of you. Well, we're either gonna. I, I turn to Boyd, and I'm like, "Well, we're either gonna go into the into the mall and, and look for Tom, or we're gonna turn around and leave and go up that road that where you heard cars coming." So, <sighs> shit. I think he pops his head up again above the above the shelves, and he's kind of looking around. Um, he stays up there for a fair amount, like. 15 seconds longer than you probably mm-hmm. think is tactful um brings his head back down and says i count i count three heading toward us i think i think we can get them doesn't seem like any of the ones inside the mall have heard i think we i think this will be okay i agree let's do it all right I'm not leaving tom behind if if we can help it hey if uh if your dog can be quiet, I think maybe, like not too loud anyway. I think maybe that might help. I guess Bo- you've been together for a while, so Boyd has probably been on supply runs with you in the past and probably knows. Yeah, I, I guess the question goes back to you: How can can a whiskey kill zombies without being too loud? <laughs> We're gonna say as well that it seems that um, while whiskey doesn't eat zombie flesh he certainly has injected his his share of zombie fluids and doesn't seem to be any worse for the wear so you you reason that it must be a a pathogen that only affects humans in fact you've not seen any zombie animals right anyway um i don't know that a dog can be quiet while it's uh, in attack mode i don't think that's like, <laughs> you know, i don't think that's possible <laughs> i don't uh, yeah I don't either. I don't have dogs. I've never had a dog, so I can't really tell you for sure. I grew up with uh, dogs. I've been attacked by dogs. (laughs) And they're they're noisy. Yeah. They are pretty, they are kind of loud. I'm just wondering whether it's louder than like a body falling into a shelf and knocking over a bunch of like, like heavy items. Um, If it's not barking, then it probably wouldn't be any louder. Right. Yeah, I would say the growl is probably less than the the stuff that fell off the shelf and clamored to the floor or the shelves falling over. The growl is probably less than that kind of a noise level. But if he's going to bark, it's going to echo in the in the building that we're in. Uh, it's going to be loud. Yeah. Again, so, I think you've probably trained. I'm going to say that you've probably in the three months since the apocalypse has happened, it's important to be quiet. Um, and mm-hmm. you've probably trained whiskey to with a command that means he like he knows not to bark. Mm-hmm. Yep. So he'll he'll he can kill as quietly as a dog can without barking. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> and you actually maybe have a command which also means like go attack. Do you want to give that? You gonna wait for a bit? No, I'm gonna give that command. Okay. We're gonna go. Okay. I mean, the zombies are approaching. You don't not none of them have come around the corner yet. You still gonna give the command? Yep. Okay, you give the command. It's like 
It's like whiskey was on, like on a spring, coiled spring, and just shoots off and boom, disappears off to the left. And within five seconds, you hear, <laughs> and like the sound of like a dog savaging something and a, and a thump as something hits the floor. Boyd gets up on his feet with his with his lacrosse stick and he goes rushing, um, he goes rushing off the opposite direction to the right. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? I'm gonna rush out and um, to where the to where whiskey went, and um, if there's a, a zombie standing that's in my way, I'm gonna go after that. And if not, if I'll smash the zombie's head in that the that whiskey has knocked to the floor. Okay. Yeah. You get up. You turn the way the whiskey went. Um, whiskey has a zombie on the floor who's kind of trying to ineffectually like grab at the dog as mm-hmm. as he's like pulling you know ripping its ripping its throat out um another zombie is is kind of approaching whiskey um okay. and you know if you hadn't gone this direction might might have got to the dog with the dog it, it seemed it seems like whiskey might be kind of where it's happening but do you want to take that one out anyway just to be safe yes i will yeah okay so give me a um give me another guts roll you get a plus one for your um for your crowbar and you get the have to add the two stress die to this as well. One success and no ones on the stress. Okay. All right. Yeah. You smash this. You smash this one as well in the head. Um, but you kind of wait just long enough so it clears shelves, <laughs> um, and it kind of like because you're kind of standing in in a um, what are they called? Not corridor, but you're standing in like an, an aisle. That's it. Thank you. Yep. Um, it kind of like you smack it and it's kind of like um, kind of skids down the, into the aisle a little bit. Um, how many did I say there were? Three or four? Three, I believe. Three. Okay. Um, you then turn around and uh, Whiskey is kind of like letting go of, of the zombie. Um, which is still kind of like, um, even though its throat has been torn out, it's still kind of like trying to like grab onto the fur of, of whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, but whiskey is kind of like pulling away. Like I've ripped the thing's throat out. Um, you know that you, you still have to like, it's still the brain. That's the, yeah. So if I could, I'll just bash its head in. Yeah. <laughs> I was pretty grim, isn't it? Bam. Um, yeah, you don't need to roll for that. That's fine. Um, I'm just thinking about... Let me just have a look at the stress triggers here again because it seems like... <clears throat> you probably should have had an additional stress because someone attacked you. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Um, just so just do it. Let's just... We're not going to like do any um, retrospective rolling. Just add another stress okay. to your, to your um, pool. Okay. And that'll be... I think that'll be it for now. Yeah, you um you as soon as you sma- finish smashing the head into this one, you turn to look at Boyd. Um and Boyd is standing over the body of one on the floor. Um and looking around, it's not moving. Good job. Um, Boyd. he's you kind of make make eye contact with each other and mm-hmm. um he kind of like does a little hand signal like let's go towards the um let's go towards the entrance. And <clears throat> We're going to move very quickly back over to Travis. This is all happening probably as you're coming around the northern side. Yep. So you park up. Mm-hmm. And you've kind of got two options here. You could go into the northern entrance. Or you could you could continue like your original plan was to go in the entrance that the two of them went into. Yep. You're just going to have to be a little bit more stealthy than... You have to be more stealthy to follow them because there are a couple of yep. zombies still heading in the direction that you drove, but, you know... Yep, that's fine. Oh. They're not that far away. Like, if you make a bit of noise, they, they might hear you. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I guess what I could do is I could actually just park the car outside the entrance to the <laughs> to, to the store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you do that, then yeah. um, I'm gonna probably do like a luck die to see if they if they notice at all. 
I mean, there's a lot of like it's mm. been like three months since the zombie apocalypse right so there's a lot of shit on the ground as well like you could drive over yeah. it and make a bit of noise in yeah. a car park especially yeah <coughs> so um, it's yeah, i'd get you to roll a, a six-sided die and we'll see what you would roll to see if um how lucky you were um it's kind of like do, it's kind of like yeah. doing an oracle almost <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I think so it's up to you. A, like, you can park a little bit away without having to roll anything, or you can risk getting a bit closer to them with the car. Let's risk it because you know, why not? Okay. Yeah, give me a give me a single like roll a, a d6. Oh. Okay. I was gonna do a fifty fifty, so four, five, or six would be in your favor. One, two, or three wouldn't. So, uh, yeah. You managed yeah, so to you managed to pull up okay. right outside right outside the the front door, you know right in the right in the painted lines where it says no parking. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> Always and rebel. You are you go into the store. You open the door to the store just as you see yep. Marco. Sorry, as you see Mason and Boyd, um, kind of ahead of you, mm-hmm. heading towards the like the the other entrance, the entrance into the mall. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'll just kind of duck in and head towards them. Yeah. Okay. And do that kind of like, Mason. <laughs> yeah. So they're just maybe just getting to the door and putting like getting ready to go. Then they hear you say that, so they kind of look back. Mason. I'll come running over. Well, I'll come creeping over to them. Um, stop. Go sort out the zombies. What? I sorted them out there. Uh, around the other side we'll be okay for now i hope yeah. you sorted them out took you goddamn long enough hey travis There's... you're the one who let tom go so i don't want to hear any lip out of you boyd you mean boyd sorry <laughs> i didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> terrible with names sorry there's, there's that shuts there's... boyd up that shuts boyd up there's a bunch of them but you see his... we should be right he gets it like starts scowling a little bit when you say that as well and yeah. he says, "He's Mason's quick to anger, so yeah." He yeah, Boyd, so... without waiting for anything else, when you say that, <clears throat> Boyd grabs the the door and opens it to the end to the mall and stands aside, like to let the two of you go in first. <laughs> um, <laughs> I look over at Mason and go, "What's the plan?" <laughs> Everybody with the plan. I don't fucking know. I'm making this shit up as I go. Come on. Oh. Grab a so machete, I'll follow Mason. Yeah, through. we just pass through the glass doors into the courtyard of the mall. Yeah. Give uh, give Whiskey the command to start sniffing around, see if, see if the dog can pick up Tom's scent. Okay. Um, is that something I should roll for? I don't think he's so. Trying to pick I think the scent of this somebody? is more okay. like this is more like if you're in the right spot where there would be a scent. I kind of know from my prep where where tom has been okay um sounds good so it seems a bit like why would i why would i risk you failing that when (laughs) i don't have a huge number of clues for you to to latch (laughs) onto anyway (laughs) um yeah good so like before you can do that though you notice like as i said before it kind of opens up into a a bigger courtyard here Mm -hmm. um the roses is kind of like oh is in if like central to this mall with the with the cinema off to the off to your right um the the flooring in here is these sort of like shades of brown tile um and it does look very much like a mall from the 80s and 90s like it hasn't been it hasn't been renovated um probably since it was built so it has those kind of like wooden long wooden benches um it doesn't look bad it just does it looks dated right old yeah it looks it looks it looks like of its time like of the 80s or 90s um mm. and yeah you can see that there are there are definitely zombies in here um the f- kind of three that you saw kind of shifting around from the doorway as you open the doors and and step out into the area uh into the courtyard um we did the same thing again both of you give me a d6 roll i'm gonna take the higher number again oh <laughs> Six. You roll a six. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Uh, I rolled a six as well. All oh, right. Nice. Yes. Well, 
there are a lot of zombies. So there's there are nine. I mean, basically the three that you saw before, and there's another. Mm-hmm. There's another like roughly half dozen kind of milling around in this courtyard area. I never liked Tom anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's come to that, has it? Shit. All right. Uh, fuck. Let's um, take him out. What? Let's take him out. There's a shitload of them. You think we can take them out? We can die trying. I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> My wife uh, hey, kid didn't want to die, and they're dead. Um, I'm I'm sorry about that. Boyd, but... Boyd comes up from behind you and kind of like shoves you a bit roughly out of the way. And um, he's got he's got like a glass um, vase that he's grabbed from roses mm-hmm. and he throws it um, kind of down over like over the heads of the over the heads of zombies as, as hard as he can it's Shit. not super far but it smashes off to your left to the okay. south and they all kind of they all turn that direction and start moving for, like to your left away from away mm-hmm. from you good thinking <laughs> yeah good thinking go 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 yep anyone think this be your first rodeo yeah i haven't really done much of this <laughs> um yeah as soon as you kind of get into the you kind of move into the main bit of the court of the courtyard um um, whiskey starts getting excited in a way that you know means that he's picked up the he's picked up the scent. He's looking up at, cool. at you, Mason, and is kind of looking back down and like and like pawing at the pawing at the ground in a certain spot. All right, I'm like, go, go, go. Uh, he starts he starts like, like sniffing and kind of follow following, yeah, following the scent. Uh, makes a beeline straight across from you, really, um, and just a little bit to your left, again towards the south where this where the sound came from. Um, you see that between two shops, there's like a Bed Bath and Beyond, and I don't know some other shop. There's like um, there's like a, a like an alley between the shops that goes out to <laughs> maybe like a service entrance. It doesn't look like a main entrance for this for the mall, um, but uh, yeah, that's exactly where that's that's exactly where um, Whiskey's heading. Hey, we're gonna follow him. Good, as far um, as we can. I think. Work. I'm gonna get both of you to roll. Hang up. Are we going south? No, you're kind of going directly from one, like from the um, eastern side of the mall to the western, the western side of the mall. But it's not a directly across. It's down okay. ever so slightly. Oh shit! <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> That's where I took the uh, the other zombies. <sighs> For fuck's sake! Wow. Well. One problem at a time. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> so. I guess so is, there, uh, is there a door that he's come up to? Uh, like yeah, so you're just continuing along. I would just wanted to think if I get a, um, a guile roll from both of you as you're kind of okay. sneaking to see if you're... Because you're also keeping an eye on these on these zombies, like you're relatively close to them. In fact, I'm gonna, you're both going to take one extra stress um, because you're trying to sneak past a fairly big group of zombies here. Um, now I have four stress. Ooh. Yeah, like this is Ray, this three, should... three. So roll guile, roll the stress with it as well. Of course. Uh, I have a. I rolled a one on one of the stress dice. And no successes. Do you want to push that? Failure means um, you're gonna you're gonna kind of make a noise. Yeah, I'm gonna push it. Uh, hold on, I'll try to remember what it means. If you, I don't think you can push if you get a if you get a one. Um, Let's see what it says. It depends if it's directly from the from that way you've modified it. Just check. Uh, 
<laughs> Combat and panic. Um, makes you feel any better. I also um, did not succeed. And I'm also going to make a panic roll. Of course it makes I'm, me feel I'm better. Rolling panic roll. Ed, I'm rolling the panic yeah. rolls. Ed, I'm rolling the panic rolls, remember? No, no, no. Okay. Misery okay. Goes it says if you roll if you roll a, a one on the stress die, um, you are not allowed to push it. You have to make a... Okay. Um, you can't push the skill roll. Instead, roll for panic. Yeah. So we had four and three, right? Yeah, I have four. I think Ed has three. I've got three. <laughs> it's fine. I rolled ones for both of you, so you're keeping your you're keeping your you're keeping it together. Um, but as you're crossing through, um, you know it's the light. There's some light coming through because it's daylight outside. But you know it's been three months. The skylights mm -hmm. haven't been cleaned. There's been pigeons shitting on them and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and they're getting grimy and there's, it's kind of, there's no, normally there'd be lights on in here and stuff. Yep. It's, and there's just a lot of stuff on the floor. And as yep. you're kind of crossing over, um, something kind of like one of you like bumps or, or kicks something and it kind of just makes a bit of a sound. Both of you actually oh, yeah. are kind of just make a little bit of sound as you're crossing across. Also, cause you're trying to move quite quickly away from these zombies. Mm -hmm. Um, and it does attract their attention. They, um, the ones closest to you, turn and see the three of you, like oh, plus it's... plus dog, like. Ding, 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 ding. Uh... And one by one, they start like it kind of goes uh, and starts go, 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 go. lumbering towards you as the rest also slowly start turning. And we'll say that maybe not all of them, the ones furthest away from you. Um, I'm gonna roll dice to see how many of them stay. I rolled a six. So only the three closest to you actually seem to have um, noticed and heard. And mm -hmm. um, you rush down this little like this little like corridor, this little like alley mm -hmm. type of thing between these two shops towards the um, the back entrance as Whiskey takes yep. you, you know, unerringly in a like beeline for the door. And as it's you look over your shoulders, like Shit. these three zombies are, are kind of following you. Mm hmm. Can we get through the door before they get too close to us? Oh, yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I say we do that. If we can avoid them, let's avoid them. Remember, there are zombies outside. Yes. <laughs> you open the door to the outside. Who's for, who's first, I guess? I guess Travis? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have you. You've I'll, got I'll the highest quicker, speed stat, yeah. so... <laughs> yeah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you open, you push the door open, and yeah, I mean, there are zombies out there. Um, they're a bit, <laughs> they're not right in front of you. Like, you kind of yep. open the door and kind of look around, put your head out, and they're off Shit. to your left, off to the south. Like, you're not, um, you left quite a few of them back, but they are, few they the are floor. kind of like, they are looking your direction. And some yep. of them are even like the ones closest are kind of very slowly walking towards you anyway, because that's the, you're in the direction the car drove. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think there's, there's I mean, them, they're definitely going to notice. There's no way you can like you're you're in a rush. You pop the door open. Yep. They're going to see the movement. But we're, we'll say that they're not super close to you. If you stay where you are, they're gonna they're gonna be on top of you within a, a couple of like a minute or two. But if you keep yeah. moving, you can probably stay ahead of them. And I, I literally turn around to Mason and go, "We can go out, run keep north, moving. and keep going. Yeah, or we can try and leave. Keep going. Follow. Whiskey Whiskey's seems got the same. whiskey seems right. to be heading north. I'll I'll follow whiskey. <coughs> I'm gonna go fast as quick as I can. Okay. All right. You're keeping ahead of the of the slowly growing zombie horde at your back. Um, Shit. As, as um, yeah, whiskey leads you along the along the side of the building. If we go back to the map here, you kind of get you're, you're popping out. Um, do you see where it says Middlesbrough Mall? Like yeah. the on the on the kind of left hand side of the mall. That's kind of yep. roughly where you popped out. In fact, if you go just north of it a little bit, there's like a little bit that's a 
Uh, hold on a second. Now we're gonna say you popped out where the where it looks like that like hatched painting on the floor is a little yep. bit higher up. Um, we'll say you popped out there. Um, yep. and you're being taken like towards towards the um, like around the corner here where the cinema is, and yep. Right. Yep. It seems like whiskey loses the scent. Um, like it goes through the grass. And then gets um, where was where did I want to go here? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, basically to the the very north, like the the very top left corner of the car park. Um, yep. And when you get there, like he's he's clearly lost the scent, but you see instantly that there are very recent tire tracks through the grass leading directly right. um directly to the west from the spot like towards the that kind of what looks like a, like a rubbish yeah like a, okay. a collection of, of like wood or rubbish i'm not sure what that is meant to be maybe that's like a hardware store i'm not sure yeah okay let's follow the tire tracks for as far right. as we can should, we get, says, car, should or... we get the car and follow it that way Hell yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Says boy. All right. All right. Let's run around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I'm in good shape. <laughs> so you start, you kind of basically run around to the other side. You notice like as you're running past the, so that that's the like massive Walmart super center to your left as you're yep. running around the northern, the northern side. Um, yep. You notice that there are some zombies in the car park there and they, yep. they spot you as you're running. Because you're you're like yeah you're louder yeah. than an electric car now, um, yeah. and they they kind of join the th are gonna start joining the throng, uh, but not before like they're not running or anything like that. So you manage right. to get back to the car, um, get back in the car, and there's gonna be like some zombies just coming around the side. I got another horde. You're gonna yeah. take him in a circle around the around the place. Um, but yeah, you managed to get back into the car, all of you. Yep. Yeah. I'll drive around and then. So you want to uh, drive? Do the same thing again? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I think probably what I'll do is I will probably um, go down to the southern part of the, the where it says Belts Department Store and come off the road. Yeah. That little like feeder road, around, off the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go off the feeder road and go around to the it's the street and sewer department, apparently, and recycling center. So it was basically, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. we'll do that and kind of go drive, drive around that way. Okay. Um, as you do that, you're kind of looking for the tracks that you'd seen earlier. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I wanted to say, I completely forgot. This is important. <clears throat> um, as you got, as you kind of spotted the. Um, the, the tire marks in the grass, yep. you heard car engines. And as you oh, looked okay. around, you actually saw off to the north, um, towards the Hardys, basically, you saw yep. two, um, two SUVs drive from the west mm -hmm. towards the Hardys, and they turned off to go left up the road towards Pineview, or Pineville, I should say. Oh, okay. Hmm. Shit. Language, Travis. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, do we... Mm, still looking for Tom, or should we see what we they're We are doing? still looking for Tom. Right, okay. Well, we'll go the way the we were going to originally going to go, around, and then... We'll okay. go to the uh, sewage treatment plant or whatever it is. The uh, yeah, um, and go and have a look and see if we can find those tracks. Yeah, you drive up, you see the tracks come out onto the road, um, yep. or into go the north. into the plant kind of, um, and they are yep. leaving because they drove through some grass, which was I guess a bit wet. Kind of, yep. you could see that they were turning onto the this Fifteenth Street going north. <laughs> maybe it's a, maybe it's the two SUVs. That's a that's a good guess. All right, let's just see so we can 
catch up with them. Okay. Um, I guess, yeah, so we're going to... How long has Tom been missing? Do we? I don't recall. Two days, wasn't it? Two days. He's been missing for two days, yeah. Two days, okay. Did you... um, Do we want to take a break? Sorry, well over an hour has gone by. Yeah, sure. Um, I I don't need one personally, but if you... Just get a drink if that's all right. Yeah. That's actually a good idea. I might get some water as well. Cool. Okay, we'll take a quick, like, two or three minute break, right? Yeah, no problem. See you in a second. All right. Yep. Okay, so you're going to go follow the SCVs. Yep. Okay. All right. So we've got this, um, this like interstate 25 that goes up and up and up and up. It goes right through Pineville. It's a fairly big road. And it continues through Pineville and keeps going off kind of north towards the north. <clears throat> so if these SUVs stay on that, it's exactly the same road that you mm-hmm. took when you um, when you came down to Middlesbrough. Um, yeah. You should be able to Why catch up I... to them, assuming they don't turn off some direction. Why do I think that Tom has told them where we are? Because he's just a kid. He's a teenager. He doesn't know any better. I don't know what the hell he was doing on a supply run in the first place. So he was um, he was a teenager, probably like 16, 17, that sort of age. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shit. And he probably All used right. the he probably used the argument that he's if he's old enough to serve serve his country, he's old enough to go on the supply run. <laughs> 
Well, Macy would beg to differ with that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let me let me okay. pull up the actual map that I created. <laughs> Woo. Where is it? Here we go. Right. Yeah. So I guess on the map where it says Middlesbrough at the bottom, um, the kind of the green the green map that I made, uh, that's yep. the road coming up that goes past uh, Wasioto Winds is a is a golf course. Yep. Um, yeah. So you're driving again, Travis. Yep, looks that way. Okay. Um, I'm going to say as you're in the car and you kind of get back, you pull onto the interstate, you don't see the SUVs in front of you because you had to still yep. get back to your car, drive around. You went slow to look past mm. like where the um, the tire tracks were. Yep. <clears throat> you don't see you don't see any sign of them. Um, do you want to keep, keep driving? Um, I guess I'll kind of... I probably figure we're probably what a couple of minutes behind them, maybe four or five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so I figure, yeah, if we try, um, and I'll, I'll kind of like every time we get to a a main road going left to right off this road, I'll I'll kind of stop. Well, not stop. But I'll kind of slow down a little bit to check either side yeah. if there's like any dust or dirt that's been mm -hmm. settled from any kind of like any side roads or anything, then yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of stop and look at that. But if not, then I'll just keep going. Okay. I mean, you've got passengers in the car. They can, like, you can look one direction, they can look in the other direction. Yeah. Just to make, make sure you don't have to go too slow. Um, keep an eye out, see if you can see them. Yeah, fine. You start doing that. Um, I'm going to say that you can both relieve one stress. Um, okay. For the first, like, for the first kind of bit of this journey, because you're in a safe spot away from... Um, away from any known danger right now, even though there's potentially still, it's still kind of stressful. Um, I'll let you recover one. Um, <laughs> and you don't see, you don't see any sign as you come up to like side roads, you slow down, you kind of look, you, you just can't, there's no obvious like tracks or, um, you know, dust or anything like that, that you can see. Yep. They're just sticking on the main uh, motorway. Maybe I mean highway. it could. You're not a hundred. You're not a hundred percent sure if they would have turned off one of these side roads that you'd be able to tell. It's just that there's no yeah. really obvious signs. If that makes sense. Okay. I'm not saying that they haven't. I'm saying that you can't tell. We really. can't see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we'll kind of make our way back with the provision that they're probably heading towards Pineville. I put Pineview on the map, but it's actually Pineville, isn't it? I think it's Pineville, yeah. It's Ville, yeah. Oops, see Daisy. Okay, I'll need to... I'm used to Pineview. <laughs> oh, all right. I've been saying Pineview as well. I don't know why. I think Pineview's in a book I read, maybe. Anyway, regardless, you get um, you get past the entrance so that you would turn left to go off towards the um, towards the resort where you've got your yeah. base. Um. Do you want to keep going straight? Or do you want to turn? Do you want to turn left? So straight takes you to Pineville. Yeah. Um, I reckon I'm going with a hunch here. I'll kind of stop, and I'll check in the rear view mirror to see if there's anyone watching. Just Boyd behind you, like makes eye contact with you. Yep, yeah. and I'll kind of look. Um to see if there's anyone actually following us. Nope. Nope. Which case then I'll I'll turn left down the road that goes to the Wasato Winds golf course and then go all the way up um yeah. to the to the Pine Mountain State Resort Park. Okay. So you've got like there's fences that go around part of this and um in the in the time that you've been here there has been an, an effort to kind of barricade, um, like put a perimeter around <laughs> the the main bit of the resort where the the yeah. lodge the lodge house is, um, just obviously to keep bad people out, but as also keep zombies from just kind of wandering in. Yeah. Um, and as you're kind of driving along, you're probably halfway along the road towards towards the resort when. Yeah you hear automatic rifle fire bursting 
Not okay. not near you, but not too far away. Yep. Okay. What do you want to do? I guess I'll speed up a little. You start speeding up, and Boyd says, "What are you doing? You're taking straight well, into a bloodbath." Well, we can't just leave them to it, can we? Hell yeah, we can. I will throw why, you out the car. And that's why Tom is missing, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, touche, touche. Crap. Slow down, slow uh, down. Um, Boy, shut the hell up. Travis, uh, he gets his um. He gets his hunting rifle out. He kind of leans back a bit, and he points it, like, at the back of the seat. He says, I'm pointing my gun at you, Travis. Slow this goddamn car down right now. All right, all right, all right. All right, I'll slow it down. Hang on. Um, and I'll, I'll start to slow down. I'll look in the mirror to see if he's got the gun pointed at me still or not. Yeah. He's watching right. you very, very, <laughs> very closely. Yep, I kind of slow down. I slow down. He I'll says, lose. "Mason, if you do anything, I'm gonna. Sh I swear to God, I'm gonna shoot this kid. I won't hesitate." Where's whiskey in the car? Let's we'll say whiskey's. Um... Presumably in the back. This I actually don't know where big. everyone's sitting. Yeah, well, well, presumably. In fact, in the we'll say seat. we'll we'll say no. We'll say that that Mason, you're in the back seat with whiskey. Whiskey, that makes and sense. he's actually in the passenger seat. So he's, oh, so he's actually like, like he's yeah. actually like. Leaning against the uh, the door and pointing it at you. Yep, yep, like that. So what the barrel's like in my face, kind of thing. Yeah, uh, more more or less. Yeah, it's like pointing it at your all temple. Right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll slow down. I'll slow Put down. The gun down, Lloyd. As soon as you start slowing down, he basically he basically lets go with his lets go with the of the gun with the yep. like trigger hand. Yep. And and like grab like one quick movement grabs the 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 handle of the door uh, uh, yeah, and like okay. like throws himself as he does that I speed up <laughs> okay yeah um, so this is kind of like a reaction this is kind of like a reaction thing so go, go ahead yep. and give me a um, give me a uh, a speed roll however I think because I'm not just gonna think if you get some stress for this yeah. Someone's pointing a gun yeah, in your face. Yeah, he's pointing a gun at your head. Well, I'm pissed with him now. Yeah, you're going to take an extra stress yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. Boyd's going to have to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least get a bit of road rash anyway. Um, so an extra stress to say, well, I'm glad I got rid of my 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 two to give me straight away going back to three again. Um, okay. Let's see what happens. Son of a bitch. Um... So no successes, but I did get a stress. Okay, so you can't push it then. Nope. Um, you had three, did you say? Yeah, I'm um, now on three, yeah. Panic me up. <laughs> um, you kind of like, you kind of like, when that happens, you you like f try and floor it. But yeah. he's, you're a bit too late. He kind of, he kind of yeah. disappears out of the, out of the car. And as the, as the car kind of kicks up some speed, yeah. the, the door, the momentum swings the door shut. Um, and your your hands are shaking on the on the on it um, as you're trembling. I don't know whether I'm just really scared or I'm really angry or probably a mixture of all of it. Yeah. Fucking Boyd. How old is Travis again? Uh, he's in his late teens, early twenties. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just like. Ugh. So, he, in other words, um, he tells everyone that he's twenty-five, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I guess I'll just continue to drive, but kind of, and then sort of like slow down a little bit. You see, in your in the rearview mirror, in case you wanted to look, that um, basically yep. Boyd, he kind of rolls, picks himself up, and he just disappears into the trees on one of the sides of the road yep okay i'm not gonna i'm gonna give travis some uh some words of encouragement maybe 
calm him down a little bit, pat his shoulder, tell him it's okay, you know, like. Okay, yeah. it's okay. You know, you just gotta pick yourself up and do it again. Just That's take what you're gonna do. Yeah. Boyd will get what's coming to Boyd. Now, this is meant <laughs> to be you, by that. the way. So you're, you're, can you see this like square icon on the map? Yep, I can see it, yep. That's basically you. Okay. Is that map in Miro? Yeah, 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 sorry. Okay. The green, the kind of green map. <coughs> I've changed the name. <laughs> I've just quickly um, gone into Photoshop <laughs> and re-labeled re it and saved the replacement. So anyway, apologies to anybody from Pineville. <laughs> <laughs> In case you might be watching um, this. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 yeah. Once I've kind of like taken, taken a minute, because I realized there's stuff going on. Um, I'll do my best to kind of get myself together and and continue driving. Yeah. So technically, you're you're suffering from panic, right? Um, and you recover from it when another player makes a rapport roll to aid you, or a narratively appropriate period of time passes. So I think if you if you kind of stop to get your like to pull yourself together for a couple of minutes. Um, yep. That will work unless Mason okay. is able to kind of talk you like Mason. Mason, you can definitely see that he's he's trembling. Like, yeah. Should I make a rapport roll to yeah? To yeah, you can calm yeah. him down. And I think th this is this is probably a good opportunity for you to get two extra dice from your concept. You're a bartender. Yeah. Right. Ooh. So yep. You know, people who are like in stressful situations coming to a bar, you know, you you're like. You've spent a lot of time talking yeah. to people and like getting them to calm down and not do stupid things when they're getting themselves, you know, into a, into a drunken stupor. Um, so I think I think this is probably a really good time for that. Okay, and I'm still rolling with my three stress die. Right? You're still rolling your stress, yeah. Hey, uh, one success and no ones on nice. the stress. Just... All right. So your panic, your panic condition, basically, your trembling stops as, well, what, what do you say, Mason? To... Um, yeah, I just, you know, I just take a breath, you know, take a deep breath, slow, let it out, take another one in, easy does it, you know, uh, one, one thing at a time. Boyd is out of the picture. You don't have to worry about Boyd anymore. He's a punk. He did what he did. He's gonna he's gonna face the consequences of that. Yeah. But uh, you know, he's he's not in the car. He's not ever set foot in his car again. Don't worry about it. I'm not gonna let him shoot you. Thanks, man. In the meantime, while this is happening, the gunfire is still sporadically happening. Yeah. Just to remind you, it's there's still this yeah. sorry. What do you want to do so what do you say we go back to go back to the resort and see what uh yeah let's let's go and help as many people as we can see what's what yeah yeah in which case i'll stop i'll start the car again and make our way not as speedily but with purpose um as close as i think we can realistically get to the resort park without doing anything else yeah so the path there is like through a through a like a state forest. Mm -hmm. um, so there's not like a really open road. Um, mm -hmm. There's trees all around, so you don't you don't have much visibility too far ahead of no. you as you're kind of taking this windy road um, through this very good, hilly terrain. No one can see us either. <laughs> yeah, um, and the at some point, like a few minutes later, you're still not quite there. Um, the gunfire, the gunshots stop. Mm -hmm. And as you get close to the, where, you know, the last bend is before you get to where yeah. the, um, the, like the barricade entrance is. Yep. Um, what do you want to do? Do you want to kind of just continue driving on? Do you want to get, stop the car? And um, get is out there the car a and handy, foot? like, is there a handy side road that we can no. just, no. Is there a shoulder? That we could just pull yeah. over. Um, not there. Maybe it's a very, very small amount of one. I mean, it's just a single lane on either side of the road, 
and then there's a bit okay. of grass, and then there's trees pretty much everywhere. Um, so there is space to pull. There is a bit of a shoulder, um, but the cart, like, yeah, you can pull up onto a I'll, bit of a shoulder. I'll, it's a small I'll, one. I'll do that. I'll reverse the do a three point turn so that I'm facing back down the road away from the resort. Okay. Yep. Um, and then get out of the car. Okay. Mason too. Yeah. Mason whiskey. Um, we're going to, we're going to approach on flick through the woods. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. All right. Yeah. And I got my, uh, I make sure my shotgun is loaded. Yep. You don't have far to go because you're, you're quite close to the barricade now. Mm -hmm. um and you can the first thing that you notice is the smell of smoke in the air okay um you're just coming round like the last bit of trees when you hear a sharp burst of gunfire very close this time um definitely from like where you would where you're able to kind of tell that's coming from within our our base but it's only yeah. like a it's only like a single burst of like three to four shots yeah. maybe um and there's nothing else um and as you kind of like get far enough through the tree line to see through where the barricade is um you see one suv that's parked blocking like sideways across the the entrance the like road entrance into the yep into the the your base yep. to kind of block anyone from going in or out um you can see that there's an suv just beyond that is smashed mm -hmm. through the barricade um and it's basically like stopped just inside and you see one guy um kind of like looking around on your side of the of the of the fence mm -hmm. it's nobody that you recognize and he's carrying a an assault rifle Is and he's, he what's i'm sorry go ahead go on go on oh i was just gonna ask like how is his dress what does he look like is he uh a... he's wearing like um hunting camo like it's he's wearing okay. camouflage, but yeah. it's it's not like military fatigues. It's definitely somebody who's like got them. He like does a lot of hunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. But not like not wearing high vis at all. <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to blend in. Right. And he's got a he's got like a baseball cap on, like a a dark green baseball cap too. Is he in is he in range of uh, our guns? Uh, you're the only one with the gun. And you've got a shotgun. Oh, um, yeah. It's is it sawed off? It's sawed off as well. Yeah. Sorry, so shotgun. not you're not going to do any. You're not. I mean, you might be able to hit him from here, but it's not going to hurt him very much. Okay. There, okay. it's really made for. Um, I mean, if someone had a hunting rifle, Boyd, would be would be perfect, really. Um, and if I see yeah. Boyd, it's going to see the, the smart end of my shotgun. <laughs> uh, so no, he's. So you're basically imagine that there's a road. There's a grass. Yeah. There's a grassy bit on either side. Then the tree line starts. I mean, you're in a yeah. you're in a like a state forest. So there's like right. a lot of trees, but yeah. you're you're not right. You're like not right up against the first line of trees. You're a few trees back, mm -hmm. um, and then he's like on the other side of the of the road from kind of where you are. Is where the car is parked. Was where the fence is. Yeah. So it's you're not you're gonna have to get a lot closer to be able to hit him with your um, shotgun. But you also know that if if you get lucky here, whiskey mm -hmm. could probably run up and and like take him down. Mm. Whiskey's um, also the like the fur around whiskey's muzzle is also stained a bit dark. You haven't had a chance to to clean him up of the the remains of the zombie that it that he had torn the the throat out of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Travis, do you have a knife? Or something sharp. Or my machete. All right. Yep. So yeah, I'm gonna have whiskey uh, attack the, the the man with the assault rifle. Yeah. And we're gonna move up on that first SUV, and I want you to slash his tires. Do we not want to move it out of the way first? What so do you people mean? can, because it's blocking the entrance to the. To the... Mm. 
So if we good. get in, move it out, then maybe. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, These are, by the way, not electric cars. They are yeah. right. Good old American. Well, at, the, at the very least, let's lineage. like let's check out the SUV and see what's in it and what it might tell us. Okay, let's let's do that. So I'm gonna uh, I'll, I'm gonna give Whiskey the the command. I get ready to run. <laughs> I think I think I want to. This is where having a dog counts. You get like two two dice to help you with this, right? Um, and you're waiting to give the command when he. It looks like he's like he scanned kind of like as he's looking. He's kind of looking all around a bit. You wait until yeah. after he's like looked past where you are. So you think, okay, he's look. He's just checked there. He's not going to check for another minute or two, or like for thirty seconds at least, or whatever. Yeah. Um. So you're gonna. This is gonna be like your wits, your guile, to wait for the right opportunity. Then okay. you're gonna get a plus two for for your asset, which is whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, so you're gonna be rolling quite a few dice here. There's gonna be seven dice, mm -hmm. and you're still gonna add the stress to this. So yeah, seven plus three. Hey. One success and no. Oh. No nothing Ooh. on the stress dice. Ooh. Excellent. <laughs> Um, and now give me just a single d6 roll. Okay. Six. Okay, that was your luck roll. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so not only does, does Whiskey manage to get up to the guy before he notices, um, with that really high roll on the, on the luck die, um, manages to, like, get him down quite like as quietly as you could possibly imagine like there's a bit of like <laughs> as as she basically he sorry leaps up like on the guy he's not he's not expecting a thing it just like runs up really fast and then jumps mm -hmm. up because german shepherds are pretty big you say this guy is also yep. not like huge like mm -hmm. hugely tall and manages mm -hmm. to like leap and just as he's like sees the movement in his periphery vision is turning towards it like what the dog mm -hmm. like like Gets its paws on his shoulder and just goes for his throat again. Um, okay. All right, we're back. Cool. Hold on, I think. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where we where <laughs> we just lost connection with YouTube briefly. Um, I don't know where we left, where it got cut off. But basically, if if you missed this last roll. Mason and Travis have snuck up. They parked the car. They've snuck up through the trees. They've seen that there's a car parked across the entrance to their base with one guard standing outside with an assault rifle. Uh, the second SUV is smashed through the front gate um, and is inside. And with a very good roll from Mason f with getting two dice for Whiskey as the asset and five dice for Guile and then the three stress you manage to get one success with no no ones on the stress die. So, a great result. And then you roll the luck die to see how quietly... So that meant Whiskey was able to cross to the to the guard before the guard was able to spot um, Whiskey. And then the, um, the six on the luck die was to see how quietly Whiskey took him down. You got a six. So, yeah, you've taken this guy down. He nice. falls quietly as, as basically Whiskey... Just like ripping his throat out um and now yeah. we have an assault rifle well you're still in the tree line no i, guess, I know but i guess you're kind of I'm, running up closely behind i'm i'm running to the car yeah the suv yeah yep so mason you kind My of pull help. you pull um you pulling whiskey off of him and grabbing his grabbing his gun yeah okay just grabbing his gun, you're gonna pat him down. Anything else? He's got like a back. I'm he's gonna, got a backpack on as well. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna pat him down, check him, see what he's got. He's got a spare then, magazine in his, um, like in a in a pocket, easily accessible, on okay. his like um, in his jacket, like a jacket pocket. I will take that. And his backpack. You're not sure what's in his backpack. He's kind of lying. He's lying on his back as there's like blood, like flowing from his throat. <laughs> So you'd have to kind of roll him over. You're gonna take a few. It's gonna take you a couple minutes to get the backpack off, or at least to get access to it. 
if you want to. Yeah, I'll grab the I'll grab the backpack, but I'll I'll worry about what's inside of it. Okay. Later. Later. He's also got a knife. Um, he's got like a like a hunting knife, a fairly big, you know, slightly curved, and it's got like some serrated um, a serrated bit at the back on the on the back of it, up near the hilt, um, mm-hmm. on a nice little like bolt a belt holster kind of thing. Um, so you can kind of like undo his belt and kind of slide that off as well and grab that. So you've got a you've got a knife too. Um, okay, cool. And I will use that to uh, make sure he doesn't come back as a zombie. Okay. So like side of the head kind knife of thing. Knife to the head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm glad you said that because, um, yeah, whiskey's uh, whiskey was was kind of um, is slightly perhaps contagious. Hey. <laughs> um yeah fine you do that you so while you're doing all that what's travis doing you're you're getting into I the car run up as fast as i can to the car expecting for someone else to be in the car with my machete ready to like in fact i just i don't even think i just put my arm through the window if the window's open or anything the window's not open okay in which case i'll stop expect someone to be looking at me nothing's happening to open the car and just stab whoever's in there but there's yeah. no one in there. You're kind of waiting. You're waiting. You open the you open the car door. There's no one inside. I'll get into the car. <clears throat> I'll, I'll shut the car. Give me door, a I'm, give me a d6 yeah. roll. One. Yeah. The, unfortunately, no keys in the ignition. That's fine. Um, I'm gonna just take the handbrake off. Um, and just let the car roll whichever way naturally it will roll. You're kind of flat at this at this point. It's okay. I'll, I'll be like, shit, I'll get back out. In fact, I'll go across the car to the inside of the, our facility, get out of that side, and then go to the front of the car and when just you, push it. Are you going to look first to see what you can see? <laughs> yeah, I'll go... <laughs> look out the window. So one thing, like, the windows inside of this SUV are tinted. Okay. <coughs> you didn't. That's why you couldn't see anyone before you opened the door. Mm-hmm. Um. You're looking through, just as you're getting ready to open the driver's door, which is the side on the inside where your base yeah. is. Um, you're looking through the window, and you can see that there are, you see bodies on the floor, on the ground, Fuck. inside the compound. Um, and you can see two two guys. <clears throat> one of them is also wearing similar kind of hunting clothes. The other one mm-hmm. is wearing more he's got like a like a flannel kind of design or like a a plaid heavy yep. outdoor jacket with a hood and he's got like a, a also got a baseball cap on and jeans but he they're both also carrying um like these assault rifles um, um i'll open the glove compartment is there anything in it nope okay Look in the back seat. Anything in the back seat? Nope. <laughs> Shit. No sign of Tom in there. No one's in here. Or having or having been in there. Okay. I will literally stay where I am, fixed, looking at what they were there doing. While in the passenger seat. No. They seem to be poking around, like look, almost like they're looking for hiding spaces or people who are hiding. Okay. And they're kind of like, they're kind of like looking at there. I mean, they're on their guard. They're kind of looking around a bit, but then they're kind of like looking for yeah. hiding spaces. And then like, you can see them going there and like poking them with the, with the rifle. Do I see them as well? No. Cause you're, you're kind of, um, behind the, like at the back of the car. Okay. We'll see now. This is what Travis is seeing. He's just gone into the car. You've just mm-hmm. finished, um, you know, dispatching this guy. I'll, I'll kind of get back over into the, passenger seat open the passenger seat door get out of the car on the outside of the yeah yeah where where, where, yep. where mason is which is where you went the way you went where you went in before where we're in yeah i said that there are two people with assault rifles um and there's loads of people on the floor dead they're looking for other people i think you definitely notice some of the some of the bodies as well like from the clothes and things like you left this yeah. morning it's only been a few yeah. hours like probably two or three hours so it's probably not it's probably just like not even noon yet Mm-hmm. Um, so you, yeah, definitely some of the people that, that, you know, like you just imagining that there's been a bloodbath of the, like the people that you care about. 
<clears throat> and I think you, take, plan, you definitely take some stress for that as well. Okay. I know the car is blocking uh, the exit or entrance to the to our compound. Yeah, but there's no keys to the car. We'll deal with that at another time. But there's, for now... There's another entrance or like another road Mm-hmm. That goes like through on the other like on the other side of the compound. Uh, that also slash has these, a barricade as well. Slash these tires so these bastards don't have a way to escape. All right, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll basically stick my machete in the in one of the uh, tires. Mason's got a knife too, so you can you can do yep. it too. In fact, I'd, I'd say the machete probably isn't super great at doing it because it's it doesn't really have a point on it. Mm. Okay, so I, I'll, use, I'll, I'll, I'll use the the knife that I took off the yeah the hunter. Um, and I'm gonna go into the um. I'll open the door again. Go into the the console underneath the um the steering lock. Um, and I'm just gonna stick my machete in where the wires are. I just go and just <laughs> cut a bunch of wires, so they can't do much with it anyway. Yeah, excellent. Um, and then I'll just shut the door back again. Okay. Now um, let's slip back into the woods mm-hmm. and sort go of around. move. Yeah, go around uh, further into our compound. Um, if these guys are in range, especially since we have one of their assault rifles, then maybe maybe we can take them out from a distance with the woods as cover. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, you've put barricades up to keep to keep zombies out and that includes things like almost like paneling right so it's kind of hard it's kind of hard you even know this as well because you put it on patrols and stuff around like the perimeter and like outside Mm -hmm. um that it's kind of hard to see into the into the compound like if people want to come and approach your compound they have to go to one of the one of the entrance one of the entrance areas where there's usually somebody like a guard um yeah and it's not easy to kind of sneak up or to or to shoot people inside the compound it's like deliberately been yep. set up that way um so it's you're, you're gonna have to either like climb a tree to try and do that C- can we not climb underneath the suv and then just make our way into the woods that way so i figure if if the suv is kind of like blocking the entrance way to the to the main the main road no, it's like it's the, gonna... the main road, This there's like a road that comes, think of it like this, there's like a through road that kind of just is a straight line, and yep. in the middle of it is your compound. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not quite like that, it's a bit more windy and stuff, but that's basically, yep. there's like two, like, imagine a wall, or a wall yep. around your compound, and they've parked it, they've parked it kind of perpendicular to the road, just yep. outside, so, so the first car's gone in, sideways. smashed through the gate, and this yep. next one is kind of deliberately blocked. Parked it. it. So if it's the SUV, we can climb underneath the SUV and go down through the front of the SUV, underneath the front of the SUV, and that would take us into the woods anyway, wouldn't it? Which which woods though? On the there, inside of our compound. There are no woods inside the compound. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought they were just from the map. There's like there's some the trees, there's some trees and stuff, but um, uh, okay. I, mean, I can Fair show enough. you. I can show you on the. Anyway. Okay. This is fine. like this is like the lodge area. Right. So basically what you've done is you've taken the like the where the lodge is for the for the resort where there's this big building with like nice rooms. It's like a hotel, basically. Right. Yeah. Um, and supplies and all that kind of stuff, because it had a big dining dining hall. Um, and there's some other like buildings around it. So you've got like a big car park inside. <clears throat> there are some trees, but there's like, you know, it's like landscape landscape. Trees, right. OK. Rather than a, cool. like a wild forest growing there. But all mm-hmm. around it, it's in, it's surrounded. It's in a national park. Or in a, right. Yeah, so it's it's still got like or a state park, so it's still got like you're surrounded by trees anyway, right? Um, okay, and that's basically how you've decided to set up the perimeter is basically like using the trees as kind of natural as like a natural barrier, but um, yeah, blocking okay. it off. Yeah, that's cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's just um, let's sneak inside. Try to yeah. you know stay yeah, inside. We... We can, yeah, we'll try that. It's the best we can do. 
try and time it with them not looking in this direction. But if they're kind of like trying to look for other people inside, we can just kind of... I Yeah, I guess there would be some trees that you could... I'm just looking at the map now. Um, have you have you looked at the map yourself? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put it in the Discord as well. So we're looking at exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of... Um, <clears throat> There's like this, the south entrance is kind of where you're, Yeah. it's a little bit, well, maybe just a little bit a touch down from there. Like almost mm -hmm. where it says 382 on the map. You can see there's like, it looks like there's some car parking spaces there. Yep. Yep. In fact, we'll say that's where the, where the guard tower has been put almost. Kind oh, okay. Of, right. Maybe almost there. So there's actually plenty of trees. <clears throat> um, no, the, the the entrance, the gate is a bit further ahead, like where where the word state is starting on State Park Road. Yep, yeah, okay. And the yep. 382, we can say kind of around, around there is where the um, the car has been blocking, is blocking the road. Right. So not not right up next to the next to the thing, but at a point where because the car's turned sideways, it's impossible to drive past it. With a, You'd have to move it out of the way. Right, okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. So there is a kind of a side. There's a side road a bit further back, um, but yep. that's all been blocked off. There's no way to gain access to it because you've that's been completely been blocked. Blocked off. Yeah. Yeah. Like where it goes to the left inside. And it's when you go yep. all the way around where it says Pine Mountain Lodge Drive, kind of exiting. Or no, maybe it's probably actually this the 382 <clears throat> where that one comes out is probably open. Okay. Anyway, yeah, something okay. like that. Something like that. Sure. Okay, well, I guess we'll just try and see if we can slip in as quietly as we can. Um, depending if we think there's anyone that we could probably save. We'll say you definitely heard some, like, some like um, screaming as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we go any further, I'm just looking at the time. <laughs> We're yep. coming up to the two and a half hour mark, and I think yep. this seems like a good spot to kind of maybe end it before what would yeah, probably be quite a long um, yeah okay, segment of, of of the scenario. So let's stop it here. Um, you definitely went a different direction. This was something I wanted to kind of dangle in front of you. Was you see yep. some SUVs going off towards the north, um, and Ed, you you did kind of put two and two together there, <clears throat> or actually, <clears throat> Marco, you did too. Um, kind of figure out what's, what was going on. But yeah, what do you think? What do you think of um, the whole thing? I like it. I like it. I quite like uh, the um, the yeah, stress me mechanic too. with it. Definitely. Yeah. It works so well for a horror game. It's such an easy kind of like port to just for zombies and stuff. Because the, the stress, I think, is something that you always kind of... And I, like, when we were listening to it, <clears throat> or more importantly, when I was what, when I was listening to what was happening with, with Mason inside while I was outside... There was definitely more stress listening to you. Like, oh, God, are you going to really yeah. go for that? <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, and because they're not like crazy, fast zombie type things, it's just that even like driving through them and over them, I like that because you're adding the stress. And I guess knowing the stress mechanic, I know that I could do that, completely panic, jump out the car, run off, in which case I'm going to, you know, I'm yeah, basically yeah. a dead man. You're like, oh, my God, okay, good, come on, come on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it definitely adds adds the sense of dread yeah. to the mm, yeah to the narrative. Uh, definitely, yeah, it's very cool. And yeah. and the possibility of an infection uh, is great. Just all those things that are there. That uh, okay, I don't really want to get involved in combat, but if we have to, yeah. Um, and, and there's and all weirdly, the whole thing with like the noise issue as well. Like, are they going to notice yeah. you? And yeah, mm. yeah. No, I, I definitely. You're saying then, weirdly, then the, yeah. Then weirdly the. The, the dealing with the zombies isn't as bad as the potential for dealing with the people. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're, they're strangely more dangerous than yeah. the zombies. So in in years or many, like when you're, when you're looking at um, <clears throat> statting up NPCs, um, it's definitely like you can give them like one trauma point, which basically means on like a success, you're able to take them down. And the way yeah. I'm doing this is like the zombies are easy to take down if you're doing it one like one at a time, but you absolutely don't want to get surrounded by them. 
Um, nice. Just like because it's it seems like a really easy thing to to kind of mechanically fit in as well because it's basically like well they're on their own they're pretty easy because they're slow they're you know they're just people they're not trying to defend themselves you should be able to take them down pretty quickly but at the same time you're going to get really stressed out by them very quickly um and i like that i liked it felt like the stress was ramping it ramped up quickly and then it kind of Mm -hmm. it kind of like peaked and kind of stayed at that three and four um, because you, you, you kind of started to manage it a little bit. Like you weren't, mm-hmm. you were trying to avoid them. You weren't, you know, you didn't stop in the mall and try and deal with the, deal with the three that were coming towards you. Um, and you kind of ran from them a little bit. So, yeah. Right, and I think it, in, in the short term, it's fine. But then the long term is, all right, I can only run for so long. They're still going to keep following me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, eventually I'm going to have to eat, sleep. They're not. <laughs> yeah and that's yeah. the i just need to take 10 minutes here oh i can't take 10 minutes because they're still following me and the and idea they follow you there might be even they might be attracting the attention more, more. yeah yeah and that's the yeah. that's the extremely stressful part <laughs> like, yeah uh... and the idea here was that um as the reason there were so many on the on the left hand side of the mall mm. <clears throat> I was thinking was that when Boyd and Tom separated, Boyd was a little bit more experienced, a little bit older. He was able to get mm-hmm. out of the building through the entrance you went in in without bringing too many of them towards him. And that's why there was like four in the roses and some mm-hmm. in the in the courtyard. But um, <clears throat> Tom didn't have as much luck and he managed to get a whole horde to follow him and that's why on the on that left hand side because that's where he exited there yep, were so many they... that's where he got grabbed by a like or got into a car that drove off mm-hmm. with him and they were just kind of left there on that side of the building which is why mm-hmm. when you were trying to go around there that's like there was a lot of the top and a lot of the bottom like... like the whole side was like oh shit there's just right. zombies everywhere here um but yeah anyway cool uh... um that was good fun i won't right. say what what kind of happened because it uh, unless you want to hear I mean, you kind of figured it out anyway. Um, well, my general gist is that they they got picked up by a rival group who then yeah, this isn't like got the details. Yeah, I'm not trying to like create the an award winning <laughs> masterpiece here. Um, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> he got nabbed by somebody in, living in in the in this town, and yep. got you know probably tortured for information on where his group yep. were, and. Yeah, they're doing a raid. Pretty straightforward. Pretty much stuff. what you'd expect. <laughs> yep. So does, so does that mean that Tom is dead? Um, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Um, you had a, a very clear fork in the road in, in terms of directions you could have taken. One was to go after the people in the SUV, which is what you've done, mm-hmm. and the other one was to maybe <clears throat> go after, keep looking for Tom. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's cool. I like it. I, I do enjoy the the, the system. First time ever actually playing um, mini, so that's quite nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, having bought it when you first published it. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's actually nice to actually see it in action. And it's really, mm-hmm. really straightforward and really simple for like one shots. And you can pretty much yeah. turn it into anything, which is, which is great. One and thing it's... we completely didn't do, and this is also um, kind of deliberate from um, one shots, I tend to ignore it, is... If you look at your character sheet, you have these uh, failure um, boxes next to your stats. Oh yeah. Oh, Every yeah. time you fail a roll, you're meant to tally that up. Okay. Um, so, like you would have, you both would have failed a few there. Um, probably in guile and yeah. speed. Guts. I think Mason got all his guts rolls successfully because you didn't. You kind of the two the two zombies you attacked, you took out. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, once that you tally them up, and then once it gets to a certain point, you're able to increase that stat. Um, and it only mm-hmm. you only tallied up on a uh, obviously as it says there with a failure. So that's the advancement mechanic in it. But again, for yeah. one shot, it's not really you need downtime, significant downtime to <laughs> to be able to increase them. Uh, mm-hmm. So in a one shot like this, where there's this constant tension, you know, getting to that downtime would be when the session would when the one shot would be or the scenario yeah. would be finished. So. Yeah. In a campaign, it's really important, but I just want to kind of mention it there. I've, I've been ignoring so, it for here. So it's much more like a cinematic experience from Alien, 
Yeah, kind of. The one shot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, oh, so that's cool. just like one aspect of user mini that we kind of um, really didn't touch on. I guess the other one was uh, having a climact a climactic scene um, is a kind of special type of um, thing that can happen. Um, and I had an idea for how that would happen if you would have taken the other fork in the road, um, yeah. but it didn't really didn't really have an opportunity here. So anyway, the, otherwise you've kind of experienced everything there was to experience. You didn't experience the trauma system. Um, uh-huh. So you got lucky there, and you didn't actually get take any damage either of you, uh, just stress. But I really I, I like pull, I really like how the skill. <laughs> <laughs> I really like how the stress kind of ramped up very quickly um, mm-hmm. and was affecting definitely affecting your roles and yeah. yeah. And I do not like being on the other end of it. <laughs> and I know that we didn't we didn't use the uh, the the failure advancement mechanic, but I just want to say I love games that that. Um, have that aspect where you learn mm. from your your mistakes or you learn from your yeah. failures. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Same here. Yep. Cool. No, All right. Definitely. Thank you very, Thank much, you very much for being Matt. my guinea pigs. Um, that was really Always fun. I've you. I've got a couple of things I know where I, I need to kind of um, you know touch up. For example, stress mm-hmm. and panic. I think I need um, either to give more examples or make it a bit more vague and up to the GM to basically say like there are lots of situations you could get in where stress should be added and i feel like yeah i i went i kind of i tweaked what was an alien but i think there's a lot of opportunity to add add more yeah. it should be just like narratively obvious um, yeah that's stressful so i think i'll be i'll probably like simplify that a bit but there, yeah i think it worked pretty well straight out of the gate um how do you f- like thinking about your your creed and your um what was it called again quirk 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 did that come into play at all for either of you, do you feel? Um, yeah, it did for me. I mean, I... Yeah, I, I think my creed was the motivation to um, find Tom, right? Because my, my mm-hmm. creed was you can't save everyone, but you'll sure as hell try, yeah. right? Um, which I, I think ties into his backstory where he tried to save his ex-wife and, and daughter and... And, and failed doing that. And then the quirk always quick to anger is when he kind of went off on Boyd. So yeah. it, it, it came into play in the yeah. sort of the, the role okay. play aspect. So. Sure. Well, yeah, that, that was think, kind of the point of it, I think. So yeah. 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 And I think that kind of, I, I quite like that. Um, for me, it was just a reason to kind of, I'm going to go and help people for my quirk. And then behold, just if you fall over, you know, pick yourself up and do it again. So while my character, I never thought would ever be sort of like, I mean, most of the stuff I picked for my character is not exactly what I would say great for survival horror. And I tried to stay away from cop survivalist or anything that I would normally play. I thought, <laughs> oh yeah, we'll go with this. Cause this is, you know, a bit different. Um, and so none of that was really of any kind of benefit for this scenario. Um, or at least I didn't find any yeah. use for any of it, but um, I definitely kind of was thinking about, right. If anything happens, I could use that to kind of go right. I'm down, but I can get back up. I'll go for an. I'll try again or whatever. And that that kind of is how I thought it would be. And I kind of figured it might maybe your creed would help you with your stress. So if you like, you know, like we did in the car. Right, okay, let's just yeah start again and just calm down. So that's quite a, a handy little thing that I used again for role playing. So whether or not that could be used to kind of give you a modifier like a plus one for something that you might want to do, or I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Just as a, to add to your yeah. possible. That might, that might, I, I was thinking the same thing as we were playing as well, where if, if like a creed really, yeah, really seemed to be like, this is something where it should be like helping me, as you just said, kind of like. Yeah. Like, like, like Marco did yeah. with talking to me. Yeah. There are poor is definitely part of being a bartender. Therefore, yeah, you know, this is what you do as your concept. So you can do that with your creed or your quirk, I guess. Yeah, I'm thinking about that afterward. I probably should have put five in rapport and three in guile, since rapport is the the uh, ability that kind of ties into his uh, previous. Uh, it's like your concept, but it, it kind of I think it work, it can work that way too. Like, yeah, like okay. it definitely makes sense for a bartender maybe to have more than three in. Um, in it but guile works as well with like being able to tell if someone's trying to cheat you or right you know just kind of you know having some smarts and you know 
not all bartenders are super chatty <laughs> necessarily. That's true. That's, true. That's very true. That's um, very true. But the the creed and the quirk I thought were you know they're like they're, they were kind of like story prompts. You know, if you get yeah, stuck, definitely. If you get stuck in a situation, you're like, oh, I don't know what my character's gonna do. Oh, I'm always quick to anger. Yeah. Boom. yeah. I'm gonna pop some. I'm gonna pop my mouth off. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Nice. I'm, I'm really happy with that. It worked. It, it flowed cool. really well. I, I felt so. I'm glad you both liked I it enjoyed as well. It, uh, it was nice so, to meet yeah. you, Marco, as well. Yeah, it was good <laughs> meeting you. Um, well, hopefully you can uh, enjoy the rest of our streams, and uh, <laughs> now you're part of the fraternity. Awesome. <laughs> Cool. And um, everyone, thanks for watching. Um, as yes, usual, you. if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and like the video if you if you liked it. Um, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of the of the game, of um, the genre, of Year Zero Mini, of the the kind of um, the tweaks I've been making to it, or any other kind of questions or comments you've got. Happy to happy to answer them in the comments. Also, um, on social media, if you want to reach out on social media, all the links are in the description. And um, there will be, in a moment, when we do the when we bring up the closing um, screen, there will be uh, like a little bit at the bottom of the screen as well telling you uh, where you can where you can reach me. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to do much more. I might try and squeeze another one of these in in November. I've got I've got a um, some some open uh, video time, but my wife is very very pregnant and is due in four weeks, so might not be able to pull it off. Um, so yeah, if 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 that is the case, then I might um I might try and do another one shot, maybe with a different um, genre or a different setting. We'll see. But yeah, if you got any, if you'd like to see another like Year Zero Mini or Year Zero Nano, um, like uh one shot and you got any ideas for what I, what I could possibly run with it leave them in the That's comments as well and um, yeah always open to suggestions cool. cool thanks very much and um, catch you next time cheers bye bye, bye, -bye.